Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to part two of the Mercury One build. How's everyone doing today? Hey, Delmar, hey, Tezza, hey, Jack Black, hey, Barnyard, hey, Rushmir, hey, Colin, hey, Victor. How is everyone doing? Andrew, I saw your message. I'm glad the Trident's working out for you. That makes me happy. Um, Joker Nut, DJ Natty, how's everyone doing? Charlie has been ready for about five minutes trying to get up on my shoulder here. So. <laughs> hey, Nick Nick. Hey, T. Newmore. Hey, B. B McNichol and Michael. Holy moly. Chat got, went quick. Hey, hey, Uncle. Uncle Paul and Turtle Crawler. Hey, Sam. Hey, Derek. Hey, Connor. Hey, the first layer. Welcome. Nabiki and Ram Online. How's everyone doing? We are we are going to make some progress today. Maybe in a little bit shorter than my usual time, though, just because Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival is like two and a half days away for me, because that's when I leave. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling the pressure. So, hey, the Poor Boy channel. What do we got? Kellogg Skid and Christopher and Steve and John. Hey, BBs. Hey, Pianzo Cadden. Hey, Scott. Yeah. So... Last week, we kind of prepped the frame and started on some gantry pieces, right? Um, and we discovered that the frame, most of my measurements were coming out pretty square. And then I got to one measurement that was over two millimeters out of square, which was more than I wanted to um, just live with. And I, I know why now. So I, I'll be able to explain exactly what happened. So now we have a, I, it's not perfect, but it's a really good, really close right now. So where's my mouse? Charlie's hiding it. So, hey, Beartastic. Hey, Samoa. Who else do we have? Domentarian and Marcus and Rebel Angel. Okay, so let's give Charlie a little bit of sh shoulder time while we continue to talk. So, I first thing I did is I took the frame completely apart. Um, I think we did this on stream and determined that there were some, it wasn't perfectly square on the edges. I don't think that had the biggest impact on the measurements I was seeing though, because it was just barely out, but I cleaned it up anyway. And what I did is I evaluated each, each extrusion, picked the shortest of the sets of extrusions. So we have sets of extrusions, all these, X direction extrusions are the same length. The Y direction extrusions are the same length. And then the vertical extrusions are the same length. So I group those up and then pick the shortest of them and clean that one up first. And then I clean the rest of them up to match that. It didn't really matter the, the, the ultimate length of them because I was taking off so little bit of uh, material. There's probably less than a half a millimeter of material, probably even less than that, that was removed in total from, from the extrusions. So um, let me explain how I did that because I don't really have the proper tools for it. So I made do. And it, it, I've done this a few times and it works out. So let's bring up, I'm, I just have a picture. So I have a picture of the, of the setup that I used um, to clean up the extrusions. And we've got, let me bring this up. So here we go. So this is an old Craftsman belt and disc sander that I've had for 15 or 20 years. And what I did is I took a lot of time to secure the, the, the platform, adjust it so that it is perfectly perpendicular to the face of the sanding disc. And this is just sandpaper. It's just double sticky. Um, sandpaper on the disc here. So I spent a lot of time with the square and and the adjustment to make sure that it's perfectly square to the to that. And then I took one of my little right angle aluminum pieces and clamped it to the platform um, with those C clamps and spending once again a lot of time making sure that that is square to the to the um, to the disc. So this works. Now, whenever you're you're kind of making do, what I would what I try to do is be very conservative with how much pressure I put on this because this isn't a super rigid, super sturdy um, setup. So I took very light pressure and just took a little a little bit of extra time 
Um, so I didn't press on this because any it, there is some deflection. So if I took, I found if I took my time and just barely pushed the extrusion into the into the disc, um, then I got better um, better quality um, finish than if I tried to do this in a in a shorter amount of time. So hey William, hey Queasy Diver, hey Woo Woodoo Kitty. I don't remember if I said hi, Bill, but hi, Bill. <laughs> hey, Alex. Who else? We have Shawdell. So just gently. So I did that um, for all the frame pieces. And then I brought it in and I checked everything with my square. Everything was coming out pretty darn square. Um, so I brought it in and assembled the frame. Now, when I assembled the frame, I put all the extrusions. I pretty much got everything back exactly where it was. Hey, Dutch dude, zero G. Um, the one extrusion that I changed the orientation of is this front bottom extrusion because it had, I figured it's the front of the printer and it had the counter sinks for the electronics enclosure. So I just flipped it 180 degrees. So those didn't show as much on the front of the printer. They still show on the side, these guys, but I figured on the front, that was a bit that I could, that I could fix, so. Looks as good as any, but a chop saw works nice for lengths. Absolutely. So if you spend similarly, spend a lot of time tramming and, and setting up a chop saw, you will get good square cuts. I was taking off such a little amount, a chop saw wasn't the right tool for this. So let me um, put Charlie on his pillow now. I hope he stays there. So I got this together. Spent a lot of time just making sure, since I knew all my extrusions were exactly the same length, I just put it together such that everything was flush. So, hey Dave, <clears throat> let me get some coffee here. So I just put it together such everything is flush. <clears throat> checking, kind of checking for square as I went, everything would stay in square until I added in these, these corner brackets. And suddenly I had this measurement up here on, on the top, across here, two millimeters out of square. So I took, the, took a bracket, one of these brackets, and discovered that they are very not square. I don't think I have ever bought cast aluminum corner brackets that were square. Let me get one of these off of here. So I can show you. Hey, Arthur. Hey, Stone Cold. Hey, Rui. Let's see. So let's pull that. Pull one of these off because I, I had to adjust all of them. And you should be able to see the so the machine marks. So this is cast surface. This I use that same jig and just just took the tiniest bit off, but they were all under square. So they were less than 90 degrees. So chop saws can work okay. The key is to use blade stabilizers and taking care and saw step and pushing straight down. Yep. So this, um, once I took every single one of these and cleaned them up on that same same setup it's all everything's measuring within i mean i'm gonna say less than half a millimeter of square measuring diagonals but it's a little better than that so i'm happy i am happy with that so everything is cleaned up and we are ready to begin to continue the build so now the other thing I do with any, any of these corner brackets, I don't just tighten down one side and then, um, and, and, and then tighten the other side. I get one side kind of bottom, bottomed out, then, get, I mean, kind of sneak up on tightening it. And I might loosen this side to let it settle and kind of work my way in just to make sure that ends up all the way in the, in the corner of the extrusion before tightening it completely down. There we go. So 
on the table. It doesn't rock. Um, you, we could see the rocking before. I can hear a little bit of rocking, but it's barely visible. Um, so very, oh yes, Charlie Kim. Very, very much better. Still not perfect. I don't have perfect tools, but I had good enough. I think. There we go. <sighs> so you need a couple of hundred dollars worth of equipment to fix this printer. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, it's I, I, I think you would you can end up with a perfectly fine printing printer. I wanted to take the extra step without doing this. The, the biggest and that's what I was kind of alluding to tuxedo, the biggest impact to being out of square, because every other measurement, if I measured everything that wasn't squared up. So if you notice and if you look at my last stream, all these measurements I was taking before were really close. And when I got to this one, that's being constrained by these brackets is when it was really off. And it's gonna be off depending on which one was tightened down first. So. Missing two on the bottom. So these two front ones were never there because the electronics enclosure was right here. So they're just not there. So it wasn't the courts. Yes, that does make me feel better. It's just a little weird the way it was the way it was rocking before, though. The licorice is packed. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so I am I am much more comfortable and happy with this. Now, the other thing I did um, off camera is in the stock Ender 5 configuration, these top Y extrusions are only held in place by these corner brackets. Um, I ended up drilling a about five millimeter hole here and here and doing blind joints. So you can see, you can see the screw in there. I did, I did blind joints on those just to, just to secure the frame a little better. Um, did I do anything else? I'm going to tap the front of these for the gantry um, belt adjustments. There are two versions of the files, one that um, mounts via T-nuts and a little longer piece on the front for the, the belt um, tensioning. I've already tapped one of them. I'll tap the other one here on camera. So I just wanted to make sure that the tap that I bought yesterday for early morning delivery, because I couldn't find any of my M5 taps, um was gonna work okay so yeah andres thanks for the gift of memberships welcome all the new members i was gonna say i was looking at chat you know i, I watch chat as it comes up i'm busy prepping and and getting ready in the morning but uh, probably about 98 percent of the name scrolling through are green. <laughs> That's awesome. And you know what? It's getting warm in here. So there's two things. There's three things that I want to bring up next. One thing is I'm prepping for Rocky Mountain. So I have two printers going. I hope it doesn't impact audio quality too much. Um, the other thing is it's starting to get warm in here. So I'm going to use my new toy and see if that impacts how loud that ends up being. It shouldn't, you shouldn't even be able to tell. So I just turned on my mini split. I am so happy with that. I turned it on yesterday. So it doesn't take up any floor space because here, let's see if we can get a quick view here. It is on the ceiling. That was a pretty good first guess at an angle for that shot too, isn't it? So ceiling cassette mini split. Hey, Mr. Jada D. Hey, make RS. What else do we have? We have mini split time. Yep. So 
yeah so it should it should get a little nicer here in a second um so those are mini splits are a heat pump so they do they will benefit me year round because it does get a little chilly out here and it gets a little hot so we're just getting to the point where it's starting to get hot plus i have multiple printers running right now so <sighs> Already getting warm, I'm chilling at 12. <laughs> um, the other thing is uh, that I forgot to mention at the very beginning of the stream is once again, um, there is a Polymaker filament giveaway. Um, the link is pinned because um, that's the giveaway today and it's in the description. So be sure to um, enter that if you're interested in winning a roll or a coupon, depending on your location. Um, and then of course, there's a link in the description that's an affiliate link if anybody's interested in getting more. Um, PF Dennis, thanks for gifting memberships. And Buddha, thanks for being a member. Off topic, but can I ask what model IWIS you use? It's not off topic. We'll get we'll get to that topic for sure in this build. Um, let me get to that. Let me catch up on chat. Says it gets chilly living in California. It does, depending on where you're at. Um, it can get chilly, and that's relative, right? That's based on people's comfort levels but morton thanks for becoming a member um i'm playing with micron now and totally agree with you regarding the size of the tfd now i just need to find one they have an updated version of the one i used um it uses USB C. so if you end up with something like that and want the files for the mount i can send it i need to publish that anyway just in case people are using that mount um or they can remix it i'll, I'll publish the cad for it it's a little a little get it done but it's done <laughs> okay iwis iwis crimpers i use i i am a big fan of the um iwis 2820m you can kind of see the model number right there 2820m big fan hey john um asumets asumetsi thank you I will send you a message. Okay. Linus, thanks for being a member. I was born in Orange County in the late 70s. We had snow every year. Yep. Um, I grew up in a little town called Red Bluff, which is north of here, but it's still only 300 and something feet above sea level. Um, and we'd get snow fair, not every year. Um, I remember one year we got snow on the first day of spring. <laughs> Brian, where did you get the frame for this build? This is an Ender 5 Pro. Um, it was sent to me as part of the stuff that um, Fabrico sent for this build series. So big thanks to Fabrico um, for basically um, sponsoring the majority of the build. We've been talking about this, this project, the Zero G project um, for a good while before that. And it, it finally came up to time after seeing it at the Rep Rap festivals and stuff to to commit to doing a build on stream. So um, Fabrico made that happen. Um, okay, we need to get into this. Where did you get the coffee mug? Um, my my good friends in the Czech and Slovak community um, sent these to me. So Sanity and, the, and Pavel, and um, I don't remember all the other names, but I appreciate it. Let's see, it's the CZSK community. I've been using that for well over a year now. Um, I am building a 0 0.1. Can I use Lubricate WD-40 Specialist PTFE Spray? I'm not sure on that one. I don't know exactly what that is, but I, I tend to use the EP1, EP2, whatever um, grease on any of my rails in a syringe, the stuff. That'll, that, I'll never have to buy that again. Jarrett, thanks, thanks for being a member. Yes, we are, we are going to see, I'm going to see a lot of you this week. That's going to be awesome. Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival coming up this next weekend, a week from, a week from yesterday. Um, although quite a few people are going to be in there for setup and, and stuff. So I'm, I'm going to be heading out on Wednesday because um, I'm driving, but I have company, so that'll be good. Okay, let's get to this. We are going to build the gantry. Um, I had put the 
the stock feet on here just so I'm not scratching things up on the table and it gives a nice stable base. Um, are you taking your son? No, I will be traveling with um, Whopping Puckard from the, the Voron team and um, Tenpec from the from the team. So it's going to be awesome. Will anyone be streaming from that fest? I believe Nero is planning on, uh, Taylor is planning on um, streaming. I'm not planning on streaming. So, and John, I'll probably try to convince um, Xander to come with me on uh, to Orange County again this year. So I'd like to go to that event again. It was fun. Oh, what do we have? Might try to stream at the Polymaker booth. Awesome. Travel costs can can add up quick. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna have to sh shuffle through here and and get the bits and pieces. So we did not um, continue the gantry assembly last week because I needed to. Um, I needed. I couldn't assemble the XY joints without the rails in place. So. I have lots of, lots of bits and pieces in here. There's those. Hey, TT. Stream the Rook build at the West 3D booth. That'd be cool. Hey, GJ. Yeah, the, the, we, we've got a jam-packed festival coming up. It's going to be, it's going to be busy. That. And then I got a bunch of little spacers I need to find in here. Hey, Mark. I finally bought a Revo and it is gray. I have one of those. Where is it? Oh, it's in, it's in the, um, it's in the Trident build. There we go. Great Revo. This is for my 250 Trident build that I'm making progress on. Steady progress. 2,000 people have registered for Rocky Mountain. That's awesome. Hey, C Senyo. Um, what was I? Oh, yeah. And one more spacer is eluding me. One more. Oh, there it is. I think this is all I need for the for the gantry. Oh, and that. There we go. Hey, Ella. Are you going to Smurf? I am planning on going to Smurf. Um, those plans can't finalize until June, unfortunately. As my wife, I'm hoping to go, um, can't request vacation from her job before six months. Uh, she has to wait till six months before the event. Um, I, if, I mean, I really want her to go if for some reason she can't, but she should be able to, I'll go on my own, but I, I am planning on being there. Not familiar with the stealth burner. I think it's an improved direct drive. Um, yes. <laughs> oh, mini spelt stealth burner. Yes. Same thing. Okay. When is Smurf? December 2nd and 3rd, I believe. Hey, Davis. Okay, so before we get too far on this stuff, I need to tap the, um, 
one of these extrusions. I don't know what's gonna be the best angle for this. So I tap this one, we need to tap that one. So let's flip this around and maybe maybe that'll be fine. So I bought a, just the, the tap I could get on Amazon that had next day early morning delivery. It was sitting on my porch this morning because I couldn't find and I still can't find any of mine. So just gonna put it in one of these little tap holders, cheap tap holders. Hey Aaron. What did you do to fix the frame? Um, I used this contraption here, on my disc sander to fix the frame. And the corner brackets, zombie, the corner brackets were terrible. So, okay, so M5 tap, this is a little spiral flute tap. It actually, it evacuates chips really well and, and doesn't um, leave a big mess. I did, like I said, I did the, one of them this morning, worked really well. So I'm just gonna do this by hand. And key part here is just make sure you're going in perfectly straight. And I'm just gonna eyeball it because it, it, even eyeballed, it's gonna be straighter than all the taps that are on this frame to begin with because they were actually pretty terrible. So I'm just gonna go just as it's catching so I can adjust if I need to, but right there is, is pretty straight. So, and it's kind of neat. Let's see if I can get a, a little better, little zoomed in view here. Come on, focus, focus. I got too much else going on. There we are. But if you see the the sp spiral of chips coming out of there. And I don't believe, I'm not sure, but I think this is, um, I don't think I need to break the chips on this. I didn't on the last one because it's evacuating them really well. Look at, there's nothing, there's nothing there. And plus this is gonna be easier for me to, for me to clean up. And I'm gonna go a little so I can, I can pull, pull these out and look at that. It's gonna be easy to clean up is the, is the key there. Yeah, I didn't think so, Scott. Thanks for confirming. Just using it, it didn't feel like I needed to. I could power tap this, but for something like this and only two of them, And I'm just going a little past the the blind joint hole I got, I got in there. I'm probably just gonna use 10 millimeter um, bolts in these anyway, but now as we pull this out, it's gonna break some of those chips and make a little bit more of a mess, but yep. So that's a, it's a nice, it was only a $7 tap on Amazon. Um, like I said, it's the one that I could get next day early delivery. But then I can just grab most of these large. I mean, all the chips are pretty large and easy to easy to clean up. I did, Ella. The, the frame is nice and square now. Steel works different for sure. This is aluminum and this is cheesy aluminum. So let me put this stuff away. Yeah, I'm not I'm not pulling or, or grabbing this very hard there. You can. It is easy to cut yourself from chips for sure. And get little aluminum slivers are the worst. And yes, yeah, so a little bit of lube would have been good as well. Um, it's such a short tap. The, the tap itself did a great job. Um, and it's, since I'm doing this live, um, and now I'm gonna take my Noga little set here and clean up the that. So focus. Oh, there we are. There we go. Did I need to swap any frame parts? No. 
I just cleaned up what, what, what was there and took off a very, very minimal amount of material. Where would you get decent aluminum? Um, extrusions, probably Masumi or direct from open builds. As far as V-slot extrusions, open builds. T-slot extrusions would be a Masumi. What hot end are you going to use on this build? A Rapido, a Rapido High Flow. Um, here's kind of pasta for that. It's less messy as oil. Yeah, and this, this worked out great. Um, these are... Nice and threaded now. Need an anodizing pen. <laughs> yeah, that's a large surface. I'm going to end up with purple ends um, just doing that. Okay, let's zoom back out. Readjust our angle. There we go. And I got to catch up. We've used that tool for many years at work. Nice little tool and there isn't much room for electric tools. Yep. N-O-G-A. Noga. So this I bought. So this is this is not a cheap little set. Um, I don't know if you can get, if you can pause or whatever, get the numbers off of there. Um, I bought this on Amazon. I bought it when it, there was an extreme sale. It was like 20 plus dollars off. Um, so that's, I would just, I just put it in my cart and keep an eye on them. It'll tell you when things change price. Have you ever gotten extrusions from 8020? I have. I bought extrusions from 8020 for my Hypercube Evolution build that I never actually finished. What tool head are you going to use? The EVA um, with a LGX Lite extruder. And we are going to use CAN bus. So I got a, so I got an LGX Lite that I happened to, you know, Fabrico provided a lot of this stuff. I happened to order this from Fabrico when these were released and I've had it sitting around waiting for a build since then. So. <laughs> Um, Necrogami, double check the dimensions on the 8020 stuff. I know they're 20 millimeter extrusions, um, might have a little weird slot size. Double check that, that seems, I seem to remember that, um, being a problem. So here, John says it's $58 right now. What can bus board? Uh, the EBB 36 from Big Tree Tech. So Big Tree Techs have provided the elect most of the electronics for this build. I provided the stepper drivers and the screen. Um, let me see what I paid for that Noga set. I'm not going to show this on camera, but it's gonna, it's a quick search here. Order details, view the invoice. I paid $45 for the for that Noga SP1007 set. OK, so the frame is now 100 percent prepped for the build now that I've tapped those those holes. So now we can get into the build. Yeah, and when I bought it, it was actual prime shipping. You know, Amazon stuff cycles, depending on the vendor that has it, depending on if it's, um, depending on uh, those factors. Are you also going to do the hydro conversion? Yes. So I won't be doing intermediary steps on this. I won't be doing the gantry and making it work with the stock um, bed setup. I ditched the bed um, going straight to Hydra. So, and, and the electronics base setup, all of that. This will be a complete conversion, although, this the whole mercury one is set up to be able to do it in pieces so okay zero g documentation there's their here's their documentation site and the link is in the description it's docs.0g.one o o n e um i don't i know the that 
the 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 zero g team dutch dude and turtle and and those are um currently working on adding to the documentation so things like if we go to the manual here and the configuration the printed files configuration um all this stuff is being updated and working um so if you if you want to what where you're starting from so an ender 3 pro ender 5 pro uh, what kind of tooth idlers you're using um, and the tension plates, whether you use a T-nut or tapped. And that's what I just did. I tapped for the tension plates. Um, and then you get the files and it'll give you a zip file of all the printed files that you need. Same down here with the Eva tool head converter. So I'm using a Rapido High Flow with a LGX, oops, LGX Lite. Now I'm going to use a clicky and I had to go to the Discord to get... Um, to get the files for the for the clicky um, probe, so it's default configuration is BL Touch, CR Touch, or an inductive probe, or none. So there are two. Um, let's see. So for the clicky, this is the fan ducts for the the standard setup. For clicky, there's a setup here that has a couple of pieces built in and then the magnets for the clicky. So we're going to list our clicky files on the docs, um, but we'll make a separate section for that. Okay, thank you. So I've printed some of this. I'm not quite sure how far we'll get today, so but I'm prepped for that. E3 did not happy with the huge delay for Obsidian now. Used a slow donkey to ship it to me. Was picked up four days ago and hasn't even moved from the depot to UK Customs. Ew. No BL touch on the Ender 5 Pro. Okay. Any beacon mounts in the works? I don't know. Dutch dude can probably answer that or turtle. That looks like the rat rig duct. It's very, I mean, it's all, isn't, isn't the whole Eva tool head kind of the, the basis, so... And it's actually starting to, I can feel the AC in here already. It's nice and cooler. This is modifying an Ender 5. Yep. So this is changing the Ender 5's um, separate whatever um, gantry system where you have a Y stepper in the back driving the, the Y and then a, an X stepper mounted on the X extrusion. Um, driving that beacon is a tight fit without redoing the back plate and ducts okay it was getting a little warm in here mg so temperatures outside are mild but i'm within a 10 by 17 space with two printers running right now so and my door's close because to keep noise from the rest of the house so it is not sit here and s dripping sweat hot, but it I have it. I might as well use it now, right? <laughs> okay. So if we go back to, so now I think, um, I think we are basically on to, unless I'm missing something, are there sp instructions for like where to put the rails um, and stuff like that? Because um, I think we're going to start with putting our, maybe put our steppers on these guys. These go back here and then put our rails on steppers and front towers first. Okay. So we're gonna put our steppers there. Let's see what kind of, whoop, we can put steppers. Hey, David. And then front towers on. Haven't gotten to adding rails to the manual yet. Okay. The noise canceling is really good. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So let me pull up the, pull my box of hardware out. We'll get it going. So I should have, so I have some tea nuts. We're gonna need 
need four of these to start. Need one there. And we're gonna need one fairly close back here. Hey, Sanity. Hey, my tech review. So I'm just gonna repopulate these. Then we are going to bolt them in. So what do we have here? I, these are probably, what are these, the 50s? Find out. 50 millimeter M5. Yep. Okay. And we can pull up. I have the CAD for this. Um, the CAD will, some of the CAD is released, is that right? The rest of it's on the way. Is this build reusing anything other than the profiles from the Ender 5? I'm reusing the power supply. Um, I'm reusing the frame. I'm going to reuse the, the Z couplers, at least to try. I'll swap them out if I need to. Um, but no, much, much of it is not reused, which brings up a point I wanted to ask, and I might make a community post poll. Um, given the parts that are left over, particularly the bed, um, what build should I, I, I should use that on something. Is there a build I should do that uses an Ender 3 bed? Okay, so we have bolts here. We are going to place these, align our there, and then pull out and line this up. Oops, I got the wrong, the wrong wrench. Where is it? Must be this one. There we go. VZ-235, what? Oh. <laughs> oh, if I do a VZ-235, it'll be with a Mike 6 bed. So I use the Ender, especially given the poor extrusion quality. Um, if you already have one, and it's and really at the basic, at the basic build here, it's not an expensive conversion, just to, just to get the benefits of Core XY on an Ender 5. It makes less and less sense the more of this you do. Um, you end up with a very nice, I'm, I'm assuming, a very nice printer. Um, so it might be behoove you if you were doing a full conversion to buy the parts and then buy a frame. I'm getting close to wrapping up the CAD release files. I've been moving parts around in the assembly so it's not a mess of files when you import it. So it's being worked on. Gonna quickly catch up to live. Hey, Kyle. Okay, so there's one. You can be naughty and use it as a chamber heater. Or you can make a slightly heated platform for Charlie. <laughs> Can you elaborate on what you're planning with ModBot on VZ stream together, he teased? No. No, not until things are... Out, uh, whatever he said is the limit of where where we're at right now. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to just make sure that these are, are lined up with the extrusion front... And side. My vote is to use the ender bed as a Charlie butt warmer. That's honestly not a terrible idea. Make a little, and the controller. I can take the controller and use it to, to set up a little, a little bed warmer. <laughs> Build a coffee mug warmer. I think that corner pieces count if you do it on an under five plus. You can do, 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 what else here? <laughs> Put it right under the pillow he sleeps on. Okay, so tighten these up a bit. I 
Okay. Let's see if we get a better, not really a better view there. Pizza heater. It's funny how we've got all these suggestions that are very not 3D printers. <laughs> okay, and then the front pieces. Okay, so which one is which? So we have our... Our bearing stack, our, our, our pulley is the, the high one on on the right side here so we'll use the high idler that guy's gonna go there filament dryer they are labeled l and l and r now are they oh right <laughs> right i think that goes like that logo forward there and put the one on the other side yes kyle i will especially after after seeing uh modbot's video yesterday absolutely okay what length screw is this it's a shorter screw let's try one of these nope that's too long okay what do we got in here? It's not a 10, I don't think. That was 25. What length are these? Here, right, let's find out. Let's look at the CAD. So, we have the CAD here. If I need my keyboard. Now, I had mentioned that I wanted to return this keyboard. I decided not to. Last stream I had mentioned it was frustrating me with the battery. It's still going to frustrate me with the battery, but I did not see any alternatives I like. So that bolt there is an M5 by 20. So I just double clicked it. And then here in the corner of the screen, um, uh, let's see. Down here in the corner of the screen, it tells me it's an M5 by 20. <sighs> Time to print side skirts mounts for for your build. I'm going to set this over here. Maybe that's easier. How long does the battery last? Uh, just, I mean, I can barely use it and it only lasts a, a couple or less than a couple of days. It's I, I need to contact support because I think it's it's unusually short for that. Okay, here we go. It's gonna go there and we're gonna keep that loose so it can slide. Hey, Tiger. I really like the keyboard otherwise. It's all just a battery life that's got me annoyed. Um, I kind of really don't want to set, I, I have I, I disabled the, the timeout because that extra second or two delay, I want to grab the keyboard and start using it. So maybe that's my, um, I need, I need to get over that and allow that to time out, or I just need to make sure I'm charging it more often. Oops, Charlie's done. Let me let him out. <laughs> Okay. Are you going to use the standard E5 feet or I'm going to use the 38 millimeter uh, by 19 ones. There we go. And then we've got these front. Let me move this over here. Yeah, see, I have the the feet printed, and these turned out really nice. I'm really pleased. But the the 38 millimeter feet corners printed. Hey, James, do those motor mounts capture the ends of the motor shafts with an end bearing? They do not. They do not. So I got these two, and we probably have a little 10 millimeter bolt. For these. 
Hey, Thomas. So that's going to go there. Nice and squared up. And here. Hey, Delvin. It's going well. There we go. And then we're going to have a tensioner screw. Oops. Ugh. Let's go down here. So what size was this screw? That said M5 by 8 is what's listed. I used an M5 by 10. Are there 8s in here? I don't see 8s. M5 by 10. M5 by 12. I know that a 10 is fine. I'm just curious if we're following that. Can you go over how to set up your starting config and Prusa slicer at the end of stream if there's time? You went over it once, but it's an older version. An older version? I haven't changed my start config and Prusa slicer in a very long time. Okay, the other thing we need is this screw, which is an M3 by 16 and then a washer, it looks like. So M3 by 16 and a washer. I have a bag of 2020 T nuts to put the backers on the Voron, moved everything to the basement and can't find them. That was my yesterday. I probably wasted two hours it accumulated of just looking for stuff for different projects I'm working on. M3 by 16 and an M3 washer. Um, the, I, I don't all, already, I don't want to scroll up. Um, oh, but built by Devin. Um, if you remind me, I'll just post, I'll just put on my GitHub, my Prusa Slicer um, basic start script. Just remind me, send me a message or something. Okay, so washer and an M3. And now that goes there. The Prusa slicer has been updated since then, and it doesn't match with what you showed on stream. Well, on today's version of Prusa slicer, then then I, I'm going to discover that on my own, too. There we go. Hey, Doc Galaxy Block. Let me let Charlie in. Come on, kitty. Oh, and mute the other computer and take my phone out of my pocket. Whew, that was close. Didn't even know you had to get up. It is, it is um, listed in the description. All my videos have the um, link to my printables profile, which doesn't have a whole lot on it, um, but it has printables profile and my GitHub. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> we don't. We don't have any new mods. That was close, though. We almost did. Um, okay. Now, if we look at the CAD here. Oh, I keep moving my keyboard. This is, this is the thing I got to get used to. What are we doing? Where does the rail go in relation to things? So I think... Is there is there a turtle or Dutch? What's the do I measure from this point? Um, so if I hit I, we're going to get info and I can measure this surface to that surface is 25 millimeters. Is that the a good reference point to to place the rail 25 millimeters from there? So. Those are 300 millimeter rails in the CAD. What do I have? Do I have something other than 300 millimeter rails? Let's find out. I 
I have 330 millimeter rails. Okay. Yes. Measure front the front edge. Hey, Manuel. No news on any of Easy Bot stuff. None at all. That that is going to be very few and far between for for news on that. They will nearly touch the back stepper mounts or might touch. Okay, let's let's see here. I'm going to start with this one and we're just going to do this. And let's see what we we can see here. Are we zoomed all the way out? Yes. Okay. So if I set this in here, we've got whatever that distance is. And that's not a great view, I know. So what is our what is our reference point? Do we make it nearly touch over here? Or what, what where should it go? Is it to be to be centered on here? What's what's the measurement there? That's a that's a pretty big. Uh, we need this documented. But if you can tell me, right there is fine. <laughs> Tells me it's not super important, huh? It won't run off the rail. Okay, it won't run off the rail. I'm gonna put about one or two millimeters here um, on this back piece then, and call it good. Better be closer to the back due to the tool head. Okay. I will put it enough off the off this back piece to where the back piece is still the stop anyway. So on the 330s, I butted mine up against the rear stepper towers. Okay. So I need some M3 M3 peanuts. Hi, Charlie. Mine is about three to four millimeters from the stepper mounts, but the carriage cannot slide off. Okay. Let's go. One, two, three. Put the rails on a trident. Um, where'd those go? Ah, they're there. Directly over Charlie's butt. <laughs> I spoke with Simon Vez last week and he told me he has spoken to Modbot and he said he wouldn't mind speaking to you. Oh, awesome. I absolutely would love to chat with Vez or Simon. Okay, let's start placing these. Oops, about where they're going. There, there, there. And then one more. Let's go there. We've got an odd number, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> Charlie is insistent on some attention. Okay, here we are. Let's let's get some some Charlie pets. Let's answer some questions. I'm thinking to convert my Zero-G to a Trident. I have three times MGN 12 rails. Is there a Voron Y carriage mod for MGN 12 rails shoes? I found anything in the forums yet. You'd have to look for that in a in the mods. So I think there's mods.vorondesign.com or you can search in the, in the Voron users GitHub. Do you know if LDO makes a 550 millimeter MGN 12? The closest I can find a 700 millimeter and could cut it. You could. Um, I would. I would shoot a message to Jason and ask him about that, or your or your favorite LDO distributor, whatever your closest or favorite is. Can you face cam on big? Want a screenshot for what? Are you talking about this? You want a a little Charlie Charlie shot? Here we go. You, you don't need me. You just need Charlie. <laughs> hey, R. Chapman. 
I'm sure someone has done MGN 12 wise. You just have to you just have to find it. Okay. He has been very needy lately, but we think we figured out why. So we're hoping um, to get him back on track. So he's had litter box issues. So we're hoping the source has been figured out. Let's see if he settles down and I'll put the camera over there. Told me he would be interested in doing a sponsored build. Woo. Okay, back to this. I've got take these protectors off. So these come in the in the um, Fabrico kit. These are these are pre-greased. Um, they use the grease through the screw hole method. So I've already cleaned those up. Hey, Andres. Hey, Double T. So I've already cleaned those up. Now I need some in three by eights. about the extrusion slot covers you got from open builds anyway you could anyway those could those be printed and so with what type of filament um sure they can be printed i'd probably maybe pick pet g just because um layer adhesion um benefits and um flexibility but the open builds extrusions if you can get them or similar they are they I, I just ordered I just ordered um how much I ordered 10 meters of it because I'm gonna fill I'm gonna use that on here I'm gonna fill all these and hide all these most of these um holes in the in the extrusions let's get these a little closer to lined up there we go and I've got some rail spacers from previous builds put on there any chance of warrens get lidar or load cells in the future you never know hey Sven. let's see I printed a bunch of matte pet g and they look great I can easily CAD the Y carriage, but I'm lazy these days. So the unbuilt portions. So the un oh. Hey, Markick. My cat is obsessed with her litter box, spends hours in it every day, just moving it around. Uh, Charlie has been has been straining. So we are we are trying to seek a very um a balance of some medication for him and hope we don't go too far in a certain direction if you know what i mean finally doing the last config checks on my bizetic 2.4 r2 awesome now to figure out how to temporarily attach the panels so i can tune and then print the actual clips and other decorative parts blue tape blue tape is your friend Oh, the shipping fees are insane. That's why I went ahead and just bought 10 meters because it ended up being like $4 and something each. And then, so the entire order with shipping ended up being a little over $60, which seemed reasonable. Um, I'm gonna just grab something consistent that I can space this out with, just so it's the same on both sides. Um, just space it right there. Um, yeah, like I said, I just ordered 10 meters just so the shipping costs and everything even out. It was like $12 in shipping. And then when you tighten these, center out. Just a good idea on any, any things that you're tightening to center out or center in a spiral. It's like a cylinder head on a vehicle. These are stainless, so really I should be using not my ball end driver just because they are a little softer and this will help keep them from stripping. Oh, Charlie, I'm building the printer. Yes. All he, all he has to do is just 
push the thing off onto the floor and he'll, he'll be happy. No, it was $60 total. It wasn't $60 in shipping. It was $60 for 10 meters of it shipped. Oh, Cam. Yep. He, he did settle. There we go. Okay, we have 300 people here. That's awesome. Let's see if we can continue our streak. I think by every giveaway time, every filament giveaway time, we've been at over 300 likes um, so far. I don't know that we've missed that. So... Okay, one side done. And how did I actually arrange that? I did I did honey badger to the outside, so we'll we'll do the same on the other side. Because it matters. Charge you $12 for 10 meters. They wanted to charge me $31 for 1.5 meters. Where are you located? Hey, Latian. Um, considering going can on my V0.2, but SHT36 or EBB36, I don't have any experience with the SHT one. Um, I, I couldn't really speak to that completely and give a recommendation. Maybe someone in chat has experience with both. Okay, so this one is here. And then we'll place the things about where they go. And about like that. I don't participate in giveaways from Polymaker. Their EU customer support sucks. I'm sorry. Isn't one PT-1000? Um, don't most of those have PT-1000 support, at least? Oops. There we go. Where did my... Ah, here they are. Oop. Oop. So that's centered. Experience any interrupted prints while using CAN? Um, I have not experienced any that I could attribute directly to CAN. I could attribute it to other problems. However, I mean, the, this is the, that mellow board with the, the fried, um, diode or what were those diodes or resistors right there? That one did interrupt prints, but it failed. So... I have SHP, but their first version, it works fine, no complaints. That one did not go... Oh, that's because I'm in the wrong hole. There we go. Uh, my Voron 2.4 is kind of narcissistic. Keeps on printing upgrades for itself and nothing else. Well, that's... That's the way. This is the way, right? Yeah, I was a capacitor. Two capacitors blew on that. One day I'll go grab my little electronic microscope that has an HDMI output and we'll, we'll be able to look at stuff like that on camera. Hey, JP. Okay, let's place this using the same spacer I use as the other side. Let's make sure all these are set. And then center out. Oh, both of them are sold with and without the PT-100 chip. Hey, 
It was just, it was some sur little surface mount capacitor on there. Okay. Now we can start building the, the XY joints, right? So that would be this side. That goes something like that, I think. No, it's the other way. This is this side. And this is probably this side. I like that. License fee to unlock warrants, print other stuff is too expensive. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going through my coffee quick today. Okay, what do I have? My prints are going well. I'm printing parts for the Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival Drag Racer, and I'm hoping I have time to finish that because it's down to the wire. I did yesterday. I upgraded all the parts on my Positron because there's some revised parts that have been sent. Did that. I worked on my 250 Trident. I did a lot of printing for the, the drag racer. I, what else did I do? I worked on this frame. I was a busy, busy, busy yesterday. Sanity, thanks for the gift of memberships. Too many gray names. <laughs> I mean, we have less than 99% of them. That's too, it's too many. <laughs> Thank you. What filament you used um, for Mofo for this? Um, this is Polymaker Pop Blue ASA, Black ASA, and the new color, the accent highlight color is yellow ASA. So, Derek, thanks for the gift of memberships. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we are going to build these. So we don't have any, um, we have some instructions, but we can just look at the CAD here. So. Can't become a member of something to do with not available in my region. And, um, interesting. Um, can you quickly go over to what printers you're gonna take to on the, in the Rocky Mountain ride? That's a good question because it depends. I have this vision. I, I basically, so I basically feel like um, the minivan I'm renting is the TARDIS, is in my mind. So I, I, my mind has it way bigger on the inside. I know I'm gonna get a reality check when I start trying to put things there. And so I have all these plans of what I'm gonna take with me and they are far exceeding what I think reality is going to be. But I recognize that. <laughs> so, uh, is it okay to print parts for Switchwire with PLA and then print them ASAP with ABS? I would probably pref recommend preferring Pet G as a, as a stopgap. But an open printer, sure. The problem is, is that if you're planning on printing ABS on that printer, you're going to have a little longer window with PET G than you will with ABS or than you will with PLA. Thanks, Aaron. Is a drag racer like the Death Racer? Well, except for it's a drag racer. It's not tracks. It's big rear tires and it's about this long. And it's not supposed to battle. It's a, it's a race. Bring Micron. That's on the table. Yep. I want to bring the Tridex. That's a big one I want to bring. Um, I was kind of hoping to get this 250 Trident completed in time because that would be the easier one to transport. So, but we'll see. 
as long as John isn't taking all the leftover space with his stuff. We're gonna have, we're gonna be packing that, that minivan. <laughs> Out of time, Lord. I am way behind on chat, let me catch up. Um, we are going to be stuffing stuff inside printers too. So. Okay, um, we are going to look at CAD here to this right joint. And basically, let's uh, let's find this. So we have the right X joint here, and we're going to oops, right X joint. We're going to isolate this so we can get a better view of what we've got going on here. So we've got a bolt coming in from above and below for the um, for mounting it to the extrusion. You see co-driver having a printer on his knees, but it's possible. <laughs> and then we've got, let's see, some M3 by 30s holding this together. Oh, some heat set inserts to put in. So let's put some heat set inserts in. I think there's three per joint and that's it. That looks like it, okay. How do you pack the printers, transport them like that? In a car, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I'm going to put a bunch of blankets around them so they don't rub against each other, but otherwise they're just going to get set in there. If it doesn't feel like they have a stable platform, maybe I'll put a piece of wood down to give them a, a stable platform to sit on. FYI, the Trident 250 skirts will fit the Ender 5, always allows you to easily set up electronics in the base. So Tavares, that is a great, great point because I noticed this yesterday. I set this frame on top of the 250 Trident that I'm building that's right here. I set this frame on there and it is exactly the same footprint. I didn't realize that. It's exactly the same footprint. Maybe zip tie gantry and tool head if they don't move. That's a good idea. Heat sets are so satisfying. Let's see, do we have heat sets in the kit here? There were heat sets. Where did I put those? Oh, they're, they're here in the hex tray. The hex tray that's getting neglected. Has anyone tried Orca Slicer yet? I have not. One, two. Not if they've seen Trident. I will get back to that project. It's just not there yet. Okay, we got the right thing in here. Let's heat it up. I bet no one is shipping their stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I could have done a better job of packing the the Trident. That was the first time I've ever shipped anything f uh, like that. So lessons learned. I'm not anxious to try it again, but... I could have done a better job. It still doesn't excuse um, UPS from treating it like a humbleweed. We need to see a bed mesh of the Trivent bed. Well, once I get it done, it should be fine. That bed didn't bend. It caused damage. It didn't get damaged. <laughs> Yeah, the problem is that big shipping container was, it, it saw every direction down. Okay, that is heated up. Let's get these heat sets inserted. Which one? That, that one, there we go. We have three heat sets here.
Okay. And then three into this one. photos of the damage no but we did um a whole stream a whole um that was a charlie's angel stream last uh it was a while back but we went over everything on it do you like the universal mirror design where you just use same parts as mirror plus spacers i don't know Jason would do a special brown frame. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose. If we replace the frame, then everything that could have been damaged is fixed. I've got to, I've got to rebuild it with that frame. That's the that's the the only way it makes sense is to use that frame. Um, I would need. I think I need one rail and probably all three Z steppers. But I'm hoping everything else can be used. Wiring harness needs to be changed probably. But okay. We are back to this. So these actually have, and I never noticed this until looking at the CAD, um, a little embossed model number and, and location designation on them. So this one is right, and this one is left, and left, and right. Okay. Uh, these extra light joints left and right are the same, but mirrored, basically. Um, basically, yeah, yeah, they are the same, but mirrored. Yes. Okay, I think I want to bolt these to the top here first and then build everything else around it, right? Maybe add the spoiler tribant or something to the mystery stream title so people can find it easier. Oh, that's that's not a bad idea. Okay. That is the mystery stream, that's right. That was a fun intro to that stream because um I don't know. I had fun with it. Okay, so I don't know. I'm a little concerned with making sure that this is because there's a little bit of wiggle there. I guess I can just line it up with the side here. All that good. Hey, squirrel brain. Okay have to get it done before Murph. So that's there. And then we've got a bearing stack to build. I only have one. Did I run out of? Ooh, I don't have enough. I don't have enough brass shims in the kit. Is that known? Is that known? Because I only have one, one shim left and I'm going to need at least five more now fortunately i have these but is that has that been fixed in the in the newer ones does turtle or dutch do you know is the plan to still reprint in ups brown with yellow accent yes yes that's that's still the plan the shim change is a very recent update okay so that's why i, ha I don't have enough and that should be updated in the 
and their things, I have a bunch of the brass shims. So. So I will need one, two, three, four, and five. Need to print new XY joints. Probably need to remind Hector again. Oh, because of the center, because of the addition of the center shim on all the, all the things, right? Okay, let's go here. Let's look at this a little closer. We have a couple of the, the rods that we're going to build things on. Are there spacers on here? No. Are those spacers? Nope, that's just the rod. Okay. There we go. Do you think a V2 can be modded dueling V2, a flying dueling gantry? That's, I'm sure it's possible. I don't know what it would take though. Okay, so if we go back to this, we're gonna put a rod in here, All right? Yep, there and there. And then a spacer. Does that go? That doesn't seem right. There's probably two spacers in there. So let's look at this. Let's, let's hide this. Hitting V. Oh, there's a printed spacer under there. Okay. I need to fix that. There's, that's where that's where that printed that printed spacer goes. Um, I've got a little bit of a problem though is I only printed two of these. Um, I'm going to need to print two more. There are two diameters of spacers. Two thicknesses or diameters? I don't have, I didn't see those in my files. Okay, we need to fix this. We need to fix this, we can fix this. Let's see what I have. I have these. These are nine millimeter in the front. These are nine millimeter. I've got, I've got two of these and two of the short. Are they different diameters? 10 millimeters in the back without flanges. The wider ones go in the back. Spacers. That, oh, so that one's, oh, okay. So that's those, that's a set for the front. So this goes in the top. Oh, I see the different sizes there. Okay. Um, The printed lip faces the bearing. The printed lip. Okay, let me see. I need files. I need, I, I've got the right print loaded. I've got the right filament loaded and I actually have the printer preheated because I was gonna print some um, electronics clips and I, I forgot. So let's get the files. So I should, I don't actually have them on this computer, but let's, let's, do, the, let's do the thing. Let's do the configurator. Let's go to the configurator and I want the Mercury One configurator I have standard tooth idlers, right? The, is this, is, are these considered the standard tooth idlers? Okay, and then a T-nut. So let's get the files. So here's, we're gonna get the files. You have two of one kind, one for each side. So you're missing the other two, yep. So I have the small diameter ones. I need the large diameter ones. So this is generating the files. Right, and there we go. Now it's, we're gonna save this. Let's save as, we're gonna throw this on the Mercury One folder. Let's save. 
and we can cancel that. Um, let's go to the Mercury One folder here and let's extract it to there. Okay. And then we have spacers, right? Am I in the right spot? I added labels to the front spacers. Front, where are the spacers here? T idler spacer short pair. So there's these. These are what I printed. Um, where's the other ones? Flange spacer. These are what I did not, right? Okay. So I need to print these. So let's pull up, let's pull up Prusa Slicer. Um, I'm not gonna do an update. Let's grab the V0. This is gonna be like a eight minute print, if that, five minute print. Um, that'll work. And that, let's add. One flame spacer short. There we go. Let's slice it. And seven minutes is what it says. It'll take about six. Send it. And then we go to V0 gold. Oops. And print. This should. Oops. Oh well. It's. I've got the. I've got my um, profiles out of sync between the computers. So things I've done on the other one, I haven't. I haven't set up a common um, profile location yet. Okay. <laughs> so we've got a print that's going to start here in a couple of minutes because I've got my bed temp different. But. What we can do is at least work on this a little bit more. Okay, did I miss anything? I did exactly the same mistake. Yeah, I just missed printing those parts. Are you using main cell or fluid? I use both. So it depends on the printer. This particular one is fluid. I have a fairly even distribution of main cell or fluid. Opinion on Cura Slicer. I haven't used Cura almost at all. When I started my 3D printing journey, um, I printed a couple of things with it, and then I bought Simplify 3D. And I used Simplify 3D almost exclusively for a very long time um, until Prusa Slicer started getting good, or at least in my opinion. Um, and then I switched over to Prusa Slicer. I have not gone back to Cura um, to try any of its stuff. That's where the Orca Slicer is nice for printed part sets. You can drop all the parts you need into the slicer at the start and set up each build plate. Okay. It's homing. It should be going here in a second. So we go back over here and go here. Our next part, since we do have the short spacer, we can go here and put this spacer there or the small diameter spacer. And then our idlers. So idler there. And then there's going to be a small spacer there. Now the other one is waiting for the parts that are printing and there will be a plastic spacer there and then the bearing stack. So while we're waiting for that, we might as well come over here and get this side started assembling.
nice and even. So now this one is going to be the opposite with a short spacer on the bottom, our pin, and then the other idler, and then the long spacer, like that. Hey Chris, could be 3D, welcome. Hey, I forget, are you gonna be able to make it to Rocky Mountain, Chris? Are there bearings or bushings in the upper support plate for the shafts? Um, on, on this piece? No, no, the shafts shouldn't turn. Would have gone for the bigger trizer over that uses 1515s. It's hard to get here. 2020 is much easier. So there is the Tiny M is a 2020 V0. No Rocky Mountain, just Murph and Earth. Okay. Well, I'll see it. I'll see it, Murph. I've, I've my hotel and my car and my flight. I think everything's rented and ready for Murph. I've got a I've got a non non-stop flights both ways this time. Um but my my outgoing flight leaves Sacramento at 5 a.m. That's gonna be fun. That is cooking. <sighs> okay, Charlie's still sleeping. I am not out of coffee, nice. When is Murph this year? It's like June 26th. It is the weekend of June 24th, 24th and 25th. Where are we at? We have got an hour and a half until the giveaway and I'm still only seeing a one in the like. I actually like early flights, but I fly out at this, of a smaller airport. That trolley to the terminal is not fun at 4 a.m. <laughs> Where are we at on the, are we, are we at least close to seeing a two? We have 330 people here. Okay, that is, that is moments away from finishing. So there's no real point in trying to find other bits of here to work on. Oh, there we go, I see a two. We're well on our way then to over two. We got an hour and a half to see a three and then and then we'll hit the we'll keep the streak alive. Well, while we're doing this, this this did come with a, an extra extrusion for the for the X. So this is so you don't have to cut down the the um, the Creality extrusion. So this has some aluminum chips in it. So I'm going to go open this over the trash and kind of knock some of those down into there. Hey, Takuya. A2. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm not really going to open it over the trash because Charlie is camera is covering my pathway, but that's good enough. Just get a rag. Get it wiped off. Some residue or something on there. Let me see if I can clean that off. CB1 and clipper screen is such a pain, really? I didn't have too much trouble once I figured out how to rotate it on the on the Micron. We are going to be using, so for this build, I'm still kind of up in the air on what I'm gonna do for the controller. So the controller is set. It's a, it's a Manta E3EZ. 
but I have a Compute Module 4 and I have a CB1. Now we did CB1 for the Micron build. I'm considering just go using the, the Compute Module for this build. Hey, Sebastian. Even though I'm not gonna be using a DSi display, I want the variety in setting up. So there's a little, little markings that I couldn't clean off and that print just finished on the X extrusion. So I'm just gonna put that down. So this will go in here like this. <sighs> Apex peppers. Do you have a granite surface plate? I have a granite surface plate. It's about, it's about yay big. <laughs> um, it's actually right here. <laughs> I have a surface plate. It's tiny. <laughs> That's about the, the max size you can get for a reasonable shipping. <laughs> CB1 with EMMC. <laughs> Good job, Andrew. Is the board can has the, the board does not have can built in. I have to use a, a U2C. Okay, this print is finished. Build plate's gonna be hot, but it's a V0. It's, let's just set it back there and that plate will absorb, pull the heat away pretty quick. What, what was, what was the rant about? Okay, so there are the other two. He was curious, was curious how good that X-Rail was. Okay, let me put this away. Okay. How's the new Tap Rev 2 beta going? Will it be soon or will it be Rocky Mountain Rev 2? I don't know of any Rev 2. I know there's definitely testing going, ongoing testing with a lot of things, but the BTT Manta E3, E3 EZ has CAN built in. Are we sure? Because I asked them when they, when we were picking the things to send to me, they confirmed that I would need the U2C. I will double check. Thanks for the heads up though. I will double check. Looks like he used a V0 more than other printers. The V0 is just so quick for stuff like this. There's no reason to wait for a um, full size printer to warm up. Um, there is something I need to double check though. These other spacers, I didn't really pay attention to where the flange was on them. Let me see if I can see that and get them installed correctly. Is a spacer between F695 bearings becoming the norm? Um, for this build, it is. I think it has can over the MCU bridge. Okay. I will, I, like I said, I, I will make sure everything is, I'm ready for that. The small ones are the only ones that have the small lip flange. Oh, okay. Let me, let me check that. Oh, I got that one correct. Hey, I got them both correct. <laughs> Just by chance. Okay, now we can finish this. So this one has a spacer on the bottom and then the, I'll put the, That needs to go in there, but it's having a hard time. Oh, I guess that was all the way in. That goes there. And then a shim and a bearing and a shim in between. Next bearing and another shim, right? 
And then the spacer. There, just like that should be correct. My BTT3 easy does can. It, the Manta one, though. I have the Manta. Is that, let me make sure. Is that what? I have the Manta. Okay, so Tina's saying the Manta does. Okay, we're, we're good then. I will make sure I know how to do that then. As far as I know, the can pins for the E3 Easy are not yet available in Clipper. Okay. Where can you get the upgraded can CAD for Mercury? It's on the way. It's it's pending. Okay, so this side, we're gonna put the, the shim in or the the rod here in. And if we go to the CAD, just to make sure, grab my keyboard. Can is on E3EZ P17. The resistor is JP7. Is not in the manual, but near the FD can sockets. Is there is there documentation on this, Tina, that I can reference? Okay, so let's undo that and undo that. Then we're gonna go over to this one. And oops, I want to isolate. Okay, so that one is spacer on the bottom. Yep. And Space, thin spacer on the top. So, big spacer. And then shims. One, two. Shim. Bearing. On the BTT Manta E3Z GitHub page, okay. This gives you a little more leeway in the in your specific belts you're using, using these spacers in between. And then the thin spacer on top. And that is both of those assembled. What was the purpose of the inside shim? Yeah, we talked we talked about that. Okay. Name Manta E3 EZ correctly. Okay. Now we need to pull this. I'm going to pull this off and we're going to put the the M5 T nuts in here. The can connector is at the end of the GPIO near the center of the board. So got these. And here, let me juggle. the inside so I'm gonna leave that on the bottom we're going to put we're going to pre populate these now I'm gonna pre populate the M3 for the for the rail Okay, so I'm gonna look at this, and we're gonna we're gonna pre-populate anything that we might need. I think we'll need a M3 here and here for the end stop, and I think that is it. And then for the for the rail itself. So, oops, let's just go here. So we are going to put a series of M3 ones on top for the... Apparently Siri is starting music. Stop. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> My phone took that as starting to play a song. <laughs> That's annoying. Those marks are concerning. Oh, I, no, this is just, this is just Misumi extrusions. That's normal for Misumi extrusions. 
Okay, so we're gonna have three there and four the other way. And the little note, the um the the kit does not come with enough T-nuts. The kit does not come with enough T-nuts. The M3s at least. M3s are are shy, I think. Let me let me make sure. <laughs> okay, so we're done with that, done with that. We did need those were M3s, right? Yep, M3s, M3s, yeah. We're shy um at least two M3 T nuts. <gasps> This is not a UTC. There, there's only a CAN transceiver that is connected directly to the STM32 MCU, like the Octopus. You have to use a software clipper bridge then. Okay. Let me get over here and get my M3 T nuts. The documentation for the Manta E3Z is bad. In the manual, they call the CAN bus FA CAN and no 120R in there. Only the schematic stock gives more of a clue. Okay. So these are the two M3s on the front and side for the um, end stop. So I'm going to populate those. And now we've got an M3 that lost the little spring ball. So I'm going to grab a different one. Place it in here and then we need an M5 on top and bottom on each one. And bottom. There. Okay. So end stop end stop rail and then the m5 is on the end for the joints so i think we can now set this on here and let's see here, maybe i can maybe i can see from this view where we're at on so right there, I'm going to flip those around. No, I'm going to leave them. We're good. Okay, so that's going to go there. And it looked like we used some here. It looks like we used some washers. So a washer and an M5 by 12 to secure that from the bottom. Here's some M5 by 12s. And there's some washers. to the back do you build all these printers for others or are they for yourself so far they've been all for me although i'm rapidly running out of room let's see if i can hold this because i want to i want to get a view here so i can center
I got a little couple little clamps here. I just want to get this lined up and then center this rail side to side in the, in the space. Before I just snug it down. I'm not really tightening it. I'm just going to keep it from moving. There we go. So that's that's centered. And I did that with it fully pressed up against the back steppers. Which spring steel plate did you use on your Ender 3 conversion? Um, I just grabbed a, a PEI sheet off of Amazon. I don't even remember which one it was. These little spring clamps are handy. That's why I have them right here. Okay. So that, oops. Now we can put the tops on. That's probably gonna go right around there. Put this one in wrong. So let's go. Oops. Come yeah, on. There we go. Currently I'm the parts left or right based on the CAD view, but is that confusing? I don't know. I think you could use an overhead wine rack just for your tools. I'm working on a CAN guide. Would you provide me remote access or execute some commands on your installation that I can record from terminal? My guide focuses on the Linux side for users. It might be a good idea to just explain how to do those those recordings. So Dot Galaxy Block here has done some CAN guides um, that look to be pretty interesting and cool. Um, some of the animations when you actually execute a command to show what happens are, are really handy. So. I'll go over those. I'll, I'll probably use those when I get to that point in this in this build series. So I'll bring it up. OK, so now the tops go on here. And those should go right in. And then we have M3 by 30s. here and here and here and those go into those those heat set inserts that we inserted before these can be snugged Everything still moves on this side. Nice. Here, just a second, I'll link this. Or, um, Dog Galaxy Block, do you mind if I link that guide in the, in the chat? Where that guide is? Where are we at? We got an hour until filament giveaway. <laughs> Does the Mark One have any traits inspiration from any of the Vorons? Absolutely. So according to um, Dutch Dude and Turtle, there are very much uh, inspired and in roots in 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 Voron. Okay, let's get this. Where's the... Oh, I, I need to turn those around because those are those are not hitting. I'm not able to hit the the location on that T-nut. Now, hold on. Let's look at let's look at the CAD here with the T-nut. Oops. 
Let me get my key, keyboard. I can't actually push the T nut into a spot where I can get to the hole. Um, but put a big disclaimer that the EG120R are not covered yet. So it's in an in progress document. So I put these T nuts in incorrectly. So see, see the orientation there is to the outside. I put it the wrong way. Um, so I need to fix that. I was checking to see if that was my mistake or a dog mistake. <laughs> Which means I need to pull these apart, I think, unless I can, unless I can work it out this way. Oops, wrong screwdriver. I don't think I can get these out of there, so I'm just gonna pull this this rail out real quick. Gantry reminds me of the Trident. Well, I mean, yeah, it's true. It's it is a Core XY setup. Fortunately, I just have to take these top pieces off. You forgot the M3 washers on these X. Oh, really? There, there are. Oh, there are washers in there. Okay. Okay, I guess we'll take that off. That's back in here. There are washers in there. V. Yes, there are washers in there. Thanks for that. I will put those in. Um, I'm making things hide in Fusion 360 by just selecting a piece of the of the component and then hitting V. It'll hide that body. So just and then so that guide we've been chatting about is let me let me get a copy the link. And this is the guide we've been chatting about. There we go. Hey, Evil. Okay, let me fix my windows here. Okay. These guys need to flip around. So that'll go. And these are too tight. These are too tight to to do after the fact as a post install. Yeah, washers there are not a bad idea. There we go. Now we can put these back on. And we'll pull, since we pulled these off anyway, we'll get these, these washers installed. So that's going right there. And M3 washers. Some people do get torque happy. Too many Ugga Duggas. Okay, washers in place. Tight is right, too tight is broken. Yes. And three more washers. Tight until it cracks and back off a quarter turn. There we 
the thing moves. The idlers float a little bit, which is good. Float up and down as they should. And then we need the M5 by 12s and a couple of washers. One, two, and where did I put those M5 by 12s? 10, these must be the 12s, yep. Snuggaduggas. <laughs> it's a Snuggadugga. That works too. Okay, let's push this in. Then we can go in here and line that up. There we go. That's gonna go there. And just snug. I'm not I'm not actually tightening those yet. You should have been a surgeon. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. Okay, so both of those are done. That's, yeah, that can't, that can't go off the front. That's good. All the way at the front, even at, at max tension, the, the idler stops the carriage from going off the front. So we are good. So I'm gonna push this against the back and go ahead and tighten up these, these joints. Cause that should be nice and square and it's moving smooth. So I ran it through the motions. Yep. Yes, yeah, sturgeon. <laughs> Installing the Heart K two piece stealth burner PCBs. What thermistor do you recommend since I'm losing the chamber thermistor on the LDO stealth burner board? I would recommend any short glass bead thermistor for a chamber thermistor and, and have it poke out the back into like the cable chain area to make that reading. Okay, now we have the X rail. We'll place our T-nuts in the approximate location. Like that with our spacers. Like that. Let's go here. There we go. Oh, and then the protectors from accidentally losing the carriage can come off. There we go. Is that right? Yep, okay. There, there, there. Every other one. And there. We are, yeah, we're doing good. We're, we're doing good. We've, we've made some good progress. Now, is this pretty much centered on here is what this should go? Just center it and does the the printed piece. This guy, yeah, this goes over, this goes over it okay. Steve streams for the abuse, maybe it's just a bonus. Under Steve Watch 3D Printing Nerds Assembly of the Pantheon. I did not. Um, the Pantheon is a really cool printer, though. I, I like what they've done with that. Oh, yeah, I haven't centered this yet. This isn't this isn't centered, but I just want to make sure it just gets centered. 
And it sounds like it. So, oops, I tightened it too much. One of these is too tight. There we go. No, nope, it's just the... And if I get out my little scale, I can just... Yeah, that's that's really centered. Okay. Tighten her up. Okay, that doesn't happen often. That is a M8 or a M3 screw into a T-nut that righty tighty turned into righty Lucy. So I gotta pull this whole thing off and see what's going on there. I did not put a lot of torque on that. And so probably a faulty fastener. So I need to pull this apart to fix that. So that's the end one here. Righty tighty turned into righty Lucy in metal parts, which is which I think is the first time that's ever happened to me on assembling a printer. Charlie's awake. Oh, Charlie's doing the old man wake up. Are there any printer friends in Arizona? I bet you we have some. V03 to get the bottom hat. Lock loose on accident. Well, let's pull this out and let's take a take a view of the screw. It there is no markings on that at all. But that that fastener does look weird. So uh, let's pull this whole end off so we can. So I can slide that off the end. It's going to be easiest. Now that is the that is the T nut that I grabbed out of my my stash, out of my parts. So put that back in there. And let's pull this off and this one off. Do, do, do. Let's see. Yeah, that one is all sorts of malformed. Yeah, it's completely stripped. It's funny that the, it, it stripped. The stainless steel screw is fine. There is no mark on that at all, and it's probably not focusing right. But that goes in the trash. Let me grab another one. Hi, Charlie. There we go. T-nuts are very soft. Okay, let's get this all back together. Oh, now he wants out, so let me let him out. Yeah. Okay, and then back to the back just to make sure. 
tighten that M5 back up. Work back up here. Do I have that in the right spot? Yep. I do. There. I'm gonna I'm gonna be brave and just reuse that fastener, that M M8 or M3 because I think it's fine. Something there. Lost that one. Where did that one go? Ah, oh, there it is. You going to Micro Center during your stay in Denver? Is there a Micro Center there? I don't know. The Trident background is looking good. Love that pop blue. Well, the, this is pop blue on the on the uh, Mercury One. This is teal. So this is Polymaker Teal ASA, KVP Proper Purple, and then the pink accents on it are pop pink. There's a micro center in Denver. Okay. I have not made any plans. And there will be lots of sauce at Art Rocky Mountain. Found one in LA, just north of I-10 near Chino. Yeah, I've been to the one in LA. That's the one, that's the first one I've been to in many, many, many years since the one in the Bay Area closed down. Um, yeah, it looks like six, is six millimeters to either side of that sound about right? We used to have lots of fries. We used to have two fries here in Sacramento. Can you say those colors again? Or I can watch the reply later. So that was Polymaker Teal and Pop Pink ASA, and then KVP Proper Purple uh, ABS. And I think Charlie's ready to come back in. So let me go get him. Oh, maybe not. I thought I heard him. Thought I heard him scratch. For you, is better linear rail on the x-axis like the Trident or carbon or steel rod like bamboo? For these builds, linear rails, Oh, Charlie's inside. What? Didn't I let you out? <laughs> He's right here. We had an in-mall Radio Shack once. We had a a um, a standalone Radio Shack where I grew up. Okay. Now that's going to go along there somewhere. It looks like it's kind of close to the end. So let's kind of place it a little further back. Those are M3 by eights. So let's just put a couple of those in there. So it just loosely. Rise was always kind of culty to me went to a corporate office and it was a hundred plus person group interview with psych tests. Ew. Fries was always interesting. But I'm sad to see it gone. Okay, so that's the little end stop piece. Should be able to wiggle this along. These T-nuts are a little tight in there, but that's okay. Okay, are we ready for belting? I think we might be ready for belting.
I want these to be pretty much there. I'm just I'm just unthreading these until they're and then threading them in just enough to catch. So just like that. You might want the tool head. We might, huh? That's funny. That's funny. I need more coffee. I have a little bit left. I might want the tool head, so let's build the tool head. That is a very good point. And very politely put. Hey, the first layer. Great stream as always, but I have to run and get my stream ready. Have fun. How far are you? Are you basically done with that build? You ready for that speed contest? <laughs> hey, Juan Carlos. Very close. Awesome. OK, we have pieces. Let's see. Let's just kind of move this stuff out of the way over here. Maybe we'll get a view. Actually, let's set this down and to the side. Let's zoom in here. OK, piece, piece, pieces. Oops. I'm on the tuning. Oh, awesome. So it's it's working. So it's running. It's it's functional. Pieces. I don't think I need that piece anymore because this piece replaces it. I'm not sure if I think that's a piece. That piece. I think that's it. Oh, that's that's a clicky piece. There's another clicky piece. That's a hand mount and another clicky piece. Forgot to upvote. You're probably the only one. No, there's over a hundred probably. Here we go. Charlie is needing a visit. Just need to open the garage. The piece with the two M3 holes plus logo is the Y end stop. Okay, this guy. So this, oh, this mounts on the side, huh? Okay, cool. Let's give Charlie some pets. Two hundred and seventy two. Awesome. Half an hour to go. We will definitely hit our three hundred goal, right? I would wire up the clicky duct and install the magnets now with CAN bus. You can leave about an eight inch pigtail for now. Thank you. That's perfect. I was recommended to not go sensorless on this, so we're not going to go sensorless. We did sensorless setup on um, on Micron, so oh, Charlie is needing his snuggles. Stuart, thanks for becoming a member. So the question was before we are doing a Rapido. And a LGX light. So this is the LGX light mount. This is the Rapido mount. And these are the ducts that was recommended would work well with the Rapido. Okay. <laughs> yep. Getting fur on me. Gary, thanks for gifting memberships. Thinking about it, I don't think Steve would open a legitimate tool store. You have a trench coat that he'd open with the tools mounted on the side. 
<laughs> okay, so we're going to set that and that off to the side. We have... Are there instructions on this or do I get to just go by the CAD? Going with the Orbiter 2 Magnum Combo. Okay. After setting that up once, I want to use it on everything. So there are good good cases for sensorless. Um, and then there are where it's not the greatest idea, in my opinion. So first, for it to be a good choice, you need very firm um, uh, stopping point, something for it to hit against. Um, and then you want to not have uh, your homing location critical. So, do you need CAD files for a different extruder? Hmm? No, I think, I think the CAD I have has, um, yeah, it has, it has LGX light in here and Rapido. So I think we're good. Everything looks, looks right. Does your parrot talk much? Occasionally. He doesn't talk as much anymore. He used to meow a lot more. He doesn't as much. Since Lewis did not work on RepFet firmware under Switchwire, neither did Clipper. Switchwire is weird though, because it's Core XZ. Awesome, I'm glad that helped, built by Devin. That is my one question. If home isn't critical, then position repeatability is not critical. Correct. So on anything where... <laughs> If it screws up and triggers too early or whatever, if it homes, is it gonna crash? So, and if it if it does, um, like anything with tap, tap is really nice for that. You can get away with, um, oh, there we go. You can get away with if it homes just about anywhere, it's gonna trigger that tool head. So, um, I'm much more comfortable using <laughs> Much more comfortable using Sensorless on a tap equip machine. Okay, Charlie is there, so let's get this piece. We are going to at least set up this piece right now. So I need some wires. Just get into my scrap. Watch old stream and Charlie was talking in the background. Yeah, he's he hasn't been talking as much, which is a little interesting. Um, yeah. there's a couple of 24 gauge pigtails. Pull that out of here. Where does that go? That would go into there. Don't really want to do that. Okay. Is click, yeah, clicky is built into the bottom here. Now let's go here. Oh, let's get a focus. Let's get a focus. There we are. So clicky is built in there. So there's a couple of wire paths here um, going into going into here. Put a little bit of glue in those and, and clamp the, the magnets in. So if I take this, is that correct? Those are two different. This is FEP wire, actually. This is FEP. This is PTFE. And the only reason I know that is PTFE, the PTFE wire I have, the black is from Remington, and it's a very smooth jacket. There's there, It's very smooth. The FEP I have is mostly from um, Linneo, and there's a little bit of a texture to the jacket. A little bit of a bumpiness to it. I don't know if it, yeah, you can kind of see that in the, in the focus there. See those differences? So I'm going to grab, at least make them the same. I just grabbed two black wires and it turns out one of them's FEP, one of them's PTFE. That'll work. That. Oh. 
I don't know. Hey, Johnny boy. I don't know how much I'm going to want to strip off of these. We're going to kind of see how this goes. So if I take this, can we get any closer? Yeah. So take this and route this wire through here. I'm going to pull that all the way through. Thanks for pointing out the difference between FEP and PTFE insulation. I just learned something new again. Awesome. I don't know if that's the case with all, just the variations that I have are like that. Okay, so that's both of those coming through here. And then I'm not sure what the routing looks like once it gets through here, but we will figure it out. Now these ends get bent, looped around back on themselves. Let me twist these. Twist these and then maybe my tweezers. It's my tweezers to get these bent around pretty good. Now that should set in there. I think I want to strip a little bit more to make that a little better, a little nicer. So strip a little bit more of this. To changing from clicky to Euclid on the room machine and being happy with it, should I consider clicky PCB on my home machine? Sure. This is 24 gauge wire I'm using right now. Either this or 20. So that. There we go. That's better. And I want that the ends of this to go down into a little divot there. Um, so I'm going to bend these outside here just a little bit more because I want them to fall into that divot. Uh, keep them twisted, keep them controlled. And then the other one will be doing about the same. Opinion on Dutch Brothers coffee. Um, in general, a little too sweet. But otherwise, whatever. Okay, so that's going to go right there. And then this one, this is kind of fiddly. Twist this. Are the ceramic tip tweezers worth anything? I bought these because I thought I was having a static um, discharge issue when I was pulling um, filament ooze off of one of the printers. Otherwise, they're they're not easy to. They don't really grip anything, but they are kind of nice for for exactly that grabbing ooze off the end of a print nozzle. Okay, so that's those two. That's those two in there. Is this your first thing? This is my first encounter with Eva. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to get my my favorite favorite tools here. We're going to set our size. A little bit more. One more, one the other way. There we go. So now we're getting these set up to where when I 
I can slip that over with a magnet in there and then just kind of clamp it in place. So I'm going to use my Gorilla Clear Gorilla Glue because that seems to be working pretty well for me. A light tin on those wires makes them manageable. For these, that's probably fine. Oops. Dry glue crap. Okay. Tiny little bit. I'll just do these first, these front two first. Just a little bit. There we go. These pliers I bought as a kit. I bought the three, the three piece kit. Okay, I'm gonna grab two of these magnets and I'm gonna grab one. It doesn't matter the orientation. The other one will. Oops, move this towards the end. There we go. And that's in there. Now, this one I'm gonna put on there and then make sure I get the same orientation for this one. There we go. Those are just going to sit right there. Make sure they are. Now I'm not, I don't want to crush the, the printed part. So I'm just putting just a little bit of pressure on them. And now the the back one here, they, they do, I think I've used them. Let, let's double check. I might be pulling them out here before this glue dries, but that's a good point. I'm pretty sure that they will conduct, but let's find out. Um, I'm still gonna put this one on because I've got it all going. So now this one, we want to put the opposite orientation of these. So that goes like that. And then like that. Okay, let's see if these conduct. That's not going to dry very fast. So these are just some magnets I bought off um, Amazon and they tend to feel pretty strong. They're not like the official N52s or whatever, but they tend to feel pretty strong. Okay, let's just see. Let's grab a grab a thing of them. Uh oh, I I I didn't even think about it. I'm gonna have to swap those. It's not. Darn it. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Oops. We can fix that. Thanks for the thanks for the tip though. Um, what do I have for... Okay, well that's a lesson. I, I did that as a lesson for everybody. If... Zero for functionality. I didn't pay that for... So we, we checked before, let me see. Um, wonder what I paid for my Nipex. Let's see. They go on sale. So... My set, that three-piece set... I did. I paid $144 for. So they were cheap. That, that was one of the lower prices. I'm going to pull all three because it, they need to match. I did. I paid $144 for them, but they, they are. I, I like them. OK, so these are not super tight in here. So I'm glad the the, the glue is being used. Um, 
I'm going to... Where's the... Wipe these off, so... There we go. And let's go ahead and put a new one right in there. There we go. The magnets, the magnets are coming out just fine. That's why the glue on this is important. That fit in there is not super tight. I'm just wiping off these old magnets. Okay, so now this one goes in the same way. And there's still, eh, this one, the other one had plenty of glue. This one needs a little bit. I did not realize that those black ones were not conductive. They've, they've got a little slot in the side here. See, these are not these are not tough to pull out. So, the like I said, the the glue is kind of important on these. Okay, and then this one. After I yeah, I'll put a little bit extra glue in there. I, I'd say, I, I absolutely say, hey, 94, um, I, I agree. The, these pliers are probably worth that. Oop. Yeah, that's, that's a, yep, that's a problem. That's, <laughs> These are, are very loose. I was just trying to check to make sure I had the orientation right, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave it alone. Wipe this off and let this dry. So it's gonna need all the time. Okay. Did I miss anything? It is clicky. Yep. What brand fan are you using? Um, GDS timer, fine. <clears throat> I'm gonna use probably a combination of a Honey Badger part cooling fan and a E3D hot end fan, because I have it. Well, it's not E3D, but it's the one that E3D sells. And if this looks funny, then we might swap it out for some black fan. Which advantage of FIP wires compared to PTFE or silicone? that warranted replacement in the Voron manual. So PTFE should be equivalent to FEP as far as our recommendation. Um, I don't believe that we recommend against PTFE. Silicone is not a great idea in chains because it tends to stick to itself and bunch up. So that's what we found out over time. Um, I know Hart designed the Micron, but who designed Solid Fork? That'd be Yeri. Maker's Muse has a bit on it. Trans okay, let me... My Merc wand is finally honed correctly. Awesome. I don't... That, that fan doesn't have an LED. It's just clear plastic. Who designed Trident? I know that's a funny question. 
<laughs> so, with the help of many great individuals, I was the lead designer on it, though. When I put magnets like on Nevermore, I glue them to both parts and then use something to keep them together until it tries. Yeah. Okay, we've got some heat sets and stuff to put in, I think. So let's look at this and confirm I know. Does that mean you designed the LEDs? What, what LEDs? Let's hide that. And for now, here, can we? Let's let's isolate the tool head. Oops. Isolate the tool head. And there we have those four heat sets. Yep. OK. Lead. <laughs> um, let's go here. Heat her up. <laughs> Who feeds Charlie the most? Me. Me and a close second would be my son. So I feed him in the morning and then he feeds him um, at some point in the day. Those crispy Trident skirts will be going on my Anycubic chair on soon. Very excited to see how it comes out. The, the Trident skirts are an interesting thing for me because I struggled a lot on how to kind of keep the V2 aesthetic um, without the pulleys and stuff. And I just stumbled onto that design and it ended up being, I mean, it really surprised me how, how it was um, taken to. Yeah, let's do this. Heat set time. I don't, I definitely don't consider, I mean, occasionally I feel like I stumble across something that looks good, but it's really a stumble. So I, I from what I understand, having no experience with the Eva tool head, is the um, the normal setup for this is captured nuts and, and stuff. Heat sets have been modified into this, which is a good change, I think. Does Charlie do the parrot thing on other people too? He might on my son a little bit, but that's about it. Okay. Oh, are there are a couple of heat sets here, it looks like. Let's see, where's my keyboard? Let's find this and... Wow. Where am I looking for? Find in the browser. I want that one. Why can't I isolate it? It won't let me isolate it. Huh, that's weird. Yep, there's heat sets there. Okay. The older version was hex nuts. The most recent version is heat sets. Now this is still EVA 2.4. There's a three or whatever. Um, and I've been told the exact reason that we're not using that. There's some particular compatibility challenges with that. So that's why we still use 2.4. So if 
surprise me to see captive nuts on the V0.2. Heat sets won't fit in the location. Heat sets would fit, but you're for the main tool head stuff, the pull out configuration, I think was the driving factor to using captured nuts there. Is to avoid being in the in the putting the heat set under tension. So is there or is there not a tool changer mod for Trident? I don't know. Has anybody in the community come up with something? There's the Trident X. So two two tools. Okay, what do we have here? Is there one heat set here? And which direction does it come go in at? Let's look at that. Yeah, I really like this keyboard feel. I don't like the battery life. That's the that's the big thing. All right, let's go here. And I think there is a heat set. What is this part? That's this. Can I? Oh, it won't isolate it. Why won't it isolate that? Is it the whole thing needs to be? Huh. That's weird. Oh. This guy here. I want to see that. Yeah, let's get rid of that. There we are. Oh, that's the tube going through. That's not a, that's a, that's not a heat set spot. Hey, David. A trident is a great choice, zombie. Hey, dragon. Oh, 299 likes. Oh, and, and just in time. We got six minutes till the Polymaker giveaway. Link is in the pin post and in the description. Is that going to be an enclosed printer? Not at first. I'm sure eventually I'll enclose it. Got to give a big shout out to Fabrico Hector. The LDO Microns won't be shipped in time for Rocky Mountain. So he shipped me the panel kit so that Harkay can sign them in the meantime. Well, that's awesome. That's cool. Okay, I don't think there are any heat sets then that go on this on this piece. So now we have the I think there's heat sets on the back piece. Let's why won't any of this? Oh, I know why. I think it's because it's a it's a sub assembly here. Why don't we do this? If we go to the tool head and open that, I think we could isolate things. I think it's because it's an imported assembly. So now if I go here and I can isolate this piece and see where all the heat sets go here. It looks like a bunch of them. Okay. We can get these done before we, before we do the drawing. Hey, Marcel. Hector is definitely a good guy. I mean, genuinely, there are there are many people in our community who are, are genuinely good people, and Hector is definitely one of them. We're very lucky, really. Because capture history isn't on for that part. I think it's because it's an imported, it's a linked uh, component. I don't deal with linked components often. I usually pull them in and break the link. Hmm. The bottom ones. Mm -hmm. not there we are <laughs> doesn't really do me any good to change camera angle if all you see is the back of my hand
So Discord ready for Rocky Mountain? Are you talking about my Discord? My Discord needs to be ready very shortly after. I still want to do the the local gathering. We were near Q and I were talking about it. Um, talking about the the second week or the first full weekend in um, in May after Rocky Mountain. Okay, so that's done. So. <clears throat> So still planning that. I mean, very informal. So it's just a matter of it'd be nice to have that together to for an announcement and notification. I missed one. Where did I miss it? Oh, right there. Good call. We've got I've got two minutes. Two minutes to the Polymaker Filament giveaway. 19th time I've done it. 19 spools given away there we go hmm. that's big bird yellow <laughs> so this is the polymaker asa yellow picked it as just a little bit of extra color to the to the build just a splash. Love the live streams and live streaming Marcel allows you to get to know the real YouTuber better. <laughs> okay, one more minute. So we hit our 300, that's awesome. Thank you. We have almost 400 people here. That's nuts. It's Polymaker Yellow ASA, nerd. Tweety Bird Yellow, yeah. <laughs> it is a good yellow. It actually is. It is It is tough. This is a, a pretty deep yellow. I don't... Here, this is going to be the better camera for it. It's a pretty deep yellow. Um, a lot of yellows end up being very pale. So, it's a good yellow. So, I think I got all of them now. I think... Yeah, I got all of them now. This one, I have all of them. This one, it will be next. But we are almost at giveaway time, so we'll do this one after the giveaway. Turtle, in the CAD, is that um, PTFE tube length accurate for what I need? So I can measure it and cut it. Fun fact, this yellow is the direct result of me complaining about Polymaker's yellow. Perfect. You did good. <laughs> I intend to watch more live streams while working on my own stuff. That's perfect. Good time. Okay, so we are at time. So link is in the pin post and the description you have. Once I actually get to that page, um, I turn off. I turn it off after three seconds of not having a response, a new, a new person responding so we're going to count it down and then i'll turn it off so three two one and oh, oh there's one three <laughs> two oh three two one three two <laughs> one and okay get oh okay it's back on for three seconds three Two, one, three, two, one, and off. Okay, every chance in the in, in possible. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's asking about oh the PTFE tube length. Is that accurate in the CAD? You know you're tempting us to troll you on the countdown, don't you? Well, whatever. This will be a be a long stream. Um, maybe I, I have a lot of Rocky Mountain prep to do, so I'm probably going to cap it at four, four hours. So another hour. <laughs> Can, oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold on. I forgot. There we go. 
I'm curious about the Charlie picture in the wheel today. Well, it's only a week past Easter, so keep that in mind. Let me export this. Let me export this list. We'll go over here. Next thing you know, we'll be going to Rep Rep Fest. <laughs> if I win, getting that ASA, ASA yellow. Perfect. Let's get the, the people. Jay Cannon, you got the last entry. And here and here. Considering we're only a week past. Okay, so there we go. So what do we have? What is a good a good number to go for? Well, it's the first annual Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, so a zero to one is not good. Um, it is being, it is starting on, what, let's say it's starting on 422. So let's do a number between four and 22. Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival is starting on Saturday the 22nd. <laughs> let's go between four and 22. 420. <laughs> I could have gone that route, but, and we are going to Colorado, but four and 22. Oh, well, let's see. All the engagement. That's right. That's what it needs to be. Let's go all the way to 22. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22. Okay. So if you're in the US, you get a coupon and a, a, for dollars off and then a free coupon. And if you're outside the US and in, in the US and Canada, you get to pick a role. So Matt must be here to win. Matt, are you in chat? Matt. Let's see. I hope your I hope your name matches your YouTube name. I missed 20. Whatever. <laughs> Matt, you are here. Awesome. Congratulations. Let's see how many how many times Matt comes up in the search on this. Whew. Seven times. So let's see. There we are. Let me just make sure there isn't anything. Yeah. Awesome. Whoop. There we are. Good job. Congratulations. Matt would want Polyterra because it's Matt. I'd expect nothing less of you, John. Ghost Dog, you're here. Welcome. Congratulations. Awesome. You will get an email from me. I better send it right after stream, because if I don't, I'm going to forget. So <laughs> I've got so much going on. Let's clear the list here. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to make everybody two weeks in a row. I'm unpinning. I'm unpinning and I'm editing the description. There we are. Are you making a vlog? I am not. I am not. I I want to I want to not worry about that. And I'm not I'm not really comfortable at that to that point yet. Hey, remember with the old streaming laptop, you couldn't click shuffle that fast as you can now. Well, that's true. <laughs> Is it possible to have YouTube offer 1080 or 720 that is just 30 per FPS instead of 60? I don't know. Fantastic. I don't know. So congratulations, Matt. First time I ever won a giveaway. That's awesome. Does YouTube enforce uniqueness on chat names? No, I don't believe so. If we had a if we had a situation, I think and I and I should have realized this earlier, but if we had a situation, I could have probably have someone um, DM me their email address. 
um, if we had something that came up that was a question like that. Um, I wish I would have realized that earlier, but that would be what we would do in the future. <laughs> you have more chances to win elsewhere. Yes, so lots of places to, to, to enter. Okay, we are back at it. So that means what other pieces? So if we look at this, we're not going to use this piece because this is incorporated into this. That's this piece. So we're not going to use that. All this is feeling pretty good. Um, we probably have a heat set to put there, so I think we can do that right now and maybe a couple of them to put in the back here. So while we're while we're doing heat sets, let's make sure that, that is correct. You do not need that heat set for the Rapido. Which one? This one here? That one you don't need? The front center one isn't used with the Rapido. OK, so I won't put that one in, but I'll put these two in then. What printer do you print these parts on? Mostly my um, blue V2. Um, some of them were done on the V0, and that would be the two. I'm still working on the purple Trident, um, at least trying to get time to work on it, doing some of the CNC tap um, testing and other um, tap testing. But. Okay, so two heat sets there. Let's get right here. Tridex and Green V2 are you using those. Tridex um, is going to be printing some pieces for the skirts for this here, but I don't generally just run. I should. I should just run regular prints on it, but for the most part, I don't. I'll be getting my Galaxy Purple in a few days. Some people already got the Galaxy Dark Gray. I have. Um, I the only thing that was left when I checked was Galaxy Teal. So I have some Galaxy Teal here, but I really want to try the Galaxy Green ASA and the and the Red ASA. Those are two that I want to try. Okay, so that is there. We don't need this piece, so I'm gonna set this aside. We have a couple of heat sets in here. This is the little uh, mount for the uh, can board. Gifted moderator status. I feel like I'm missing something. I'm not gonna deal with those yet. Oh, this guy. This guy has got a bunch of heat sets to put in. Hedgehog Mix, thanks for gifted membership. Looks like just two and then the front ones. So one. The phone in the back pocket. <laughs> And one more. Side ones are for BL Touch. Okay. I won't populate these two then. So now it's just the, looks like just the fan, the fan ones, right?
Yep, those three, those two I don't use. So just like those three. Hedgehog, thank you for more gifted memberships. Okay. Cheat that up again. we can start putting this thing together. I have a bit of an unrelated question if anyone knows. I'm planning to go can. Do I need to buy a UTC along with an SB2240? I have a Pi 3 Plus and an Octopus 1.1. Does the Octopus 1.1 have the can bridge on it? <clears throat> Steve had one of the best accidental self hacks, but modding other Steve's. Yep. <laughs> I was really concerned. What kind of flow rates do you think we can approach with a 190,000 BTUs of heat? <laughs> Excuse me. I think it's water. Okay. If I was to get a custom ABS ASA color, what would you want? I want something, oops, something in that green, sparkly, pearly. I don't know if it's possible. That's an RC car of mine. <laughs> that's what I've, that's what I've been after for a long time. I've talked to Nick about it, but I don't know if it's going anywhere. Okay, um, I'm going to turn off the cooler because it's actually cold in here. Nice to be able to do that. Okay, where are we at? Let's go here. So. Here is the tool head. And how does the... Oh, you know what? I don't think I printed these. I didn't print the belt clamps. Time to fire up the V0 again. Okay, let's fire up the V0. V0 is Oops. Yes. Let's clean. Clean the plate. I did not print those. And you know what? I had a thought. I knew I hadn't printed those and I forgot about it. So it, we are having a extra sessions of Steve prints today. Yes. So I should, if I go back here and I go to the Eva toolhead configurator, since I don't have the other files here, we can go ahead and, oh, I don't need that. We can say none and let's get the files. Uh, Benjamin, your link isn't gonna come through. It doesn't allow anybody besides me and moderators to post links and that's a YouTube thing. Let's save this as here. So we're gonna save the Eva files from the configurator and go back. And let's expand this, extract it, and we should have belt clamp. Belt clamp one and belt clamp two. Okay. See you, James. Be sure to say hi. I will be there. Okay. So we can go in here, delete this. Eclipse, thanks for the gifted memberships. And 
let's go back here and go to the Eva tool head and belt clamp one and two. Did I miss anything else? I hope not. Open. Slice it. It's going to take seven minutes, seven whole minutes, except for the, oops, the little bit of change here is I want to um, swap to black. <clears throat> Red Cat, they're the best. They absolutely, absolutely. Orange tabbies. The printed parts page on the docs does have a link to the GitHub page with all the STL files if you need. It's, it's kind of nice to go through this too, to show people the configurator and how it works, I think. And I needed copies of these files on this computer anyway. I've been working off the other computer. Okay, so let me unload the filament. Unload the pop blue that was in there. And where is my black, the black ASA? Where did I put that? Black ASA, where'd you go? I'll put it in here. Yep. Hey, lol. How are you? Welcome. I have a female version of Charlie. Does uh, your female version of Charlie like to be a parrot also? Hey, RZ3D. Oh, uh, let's see. I finally hit 500 subs. Awesome. Congratulations. and load filament. See you, Steve Clark. I, I won't see you next week unless you're going to be at Rocky Mountain. The following week is when I'll stream next. Printing the last of the stuff for Rocky Mountain. That thing is going to be exciting and we will say no more of that. It's funny when people ask if I stole Charlie, though. <laughs> very, very similar look and size. If you run low, I have five kilograms of the Polymaker Black ASA. I have two more, two more rolls beyond that. OK, that has loaded. Yep. Let me extrude a little more to purge it. Extrude. How do you store your filament when not in use? Mostly just on the on the wall. I have a bunch of rep racks that I made. Come on, John. Last minute trip to Colorado. If I truly had a TARDIS, I'd offer see if you wanted to ride along. <laughs> but as it is, we're stuffed. I already sent those, okay. Got a rescue female that looks like Charlie also. John over eating some nice licorice. Oh, with the young, oh yeah, definitely kids. Kids make that tough. Okay, let me get this. That is done, and let's print. Oh yeah, I 
That's right. I need to change the... I changed this to printing at 100 on that printer. So let me, let me do that so I don't have to remember to do that again. Okay. Charlie is going, oh no. Oh no, that would be a nightmare for me. And him, probably. How long is the drive to Colorado? It's it's reported to be like between 17 and 19 hours. So I figure it'll probably be about 17 hours. <sighs> okay, let's look at this. Let's look at these files. And how is this going to most efficiently be assembled? Do we install the top first? So we've got our... Okay, so... We've got our LGX, and this sits on here. Oops, I've got extra pieces on here because I was going to use this in a for a different build. So let me, let me take these pieces off. It's only a little bit longer than a drive across Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay, so this is here. This is going to go up and that use the same pressure advance numbers on all your machines. Not quite. It changes depending on um, the filament, filament type and the particular um, extruder. OK, let's start figuring out the LGX blocks to your mounting holes. Yep, I'm looking. I'm I'm just kind of feeling. So this has to go on the um, on the carriage first, but I need to get the X, the end stop, the X end stop in there before I do that. So it looks like we look at the CAD. There's the, there's the end stop and it just kind of sits there and gets sandwiched. No fasteners just get sandwiched on there. That's clever. Okay. If you're driving, bring your own water and soap. There's none in any rest area in Colorado. Interesting. My drive to Loveland, Colorado is going to be 10 hours. Yep. They don't wash their hands in Colorado. Then install the front and back plate. Okay. Let's see. I need some more PTFE wire. That'll work. That's actually FEP, but I'll use it all on that one. Hey, Dylan. Dylan? Dylan. I said that last time. <laughs> okay. Let's get a couple of decent lengths of wire off of here. seven plus inches of snow this year. Yep. Roads are fine. Just came through there. Okay. And then there's micro switches that came in the kit. So well, let's go this way for now. Little micro switches. What's the best cheap extruder hot end combo? That's a good question. Cheap? I mean, you can do a V6 with something, with some BMG based gears. Something something would probably be relatively inexpensive. Okay, so I'm gonna, oops, get this up here. 
And I need to swap out the tip on the iron. It's about 12 feet of snow on Donner's Pass, though. Dragonfly. Yeah, that's a good option. Yeah, that's a good good idea. Wow, uh, Dragonfly was like $70 with everything. Um, I think I need to go out a little bit to actually see anything that I'm doing here. Oops. Let's try that. I forgot to turn on the iron. pins on any of these switches set you up in the normally closed configuration. There's one. And two. Yep, we are good. Charlie, sit down. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Belt clamps finished printing. Has plus 100 in dexterity. I burned the crap out of myself trying to pull off that soldering trick. <laughs> Those solder joints are nice and shiny and billets. Heat shrink. Yes, we should do heat shrink on those. We should. No, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Oh, Charlie wants out. Let's set this somewhere and let Charlie out. There he goes. I got assistance. Fabrico has 25% off betas right now. There you go. Right, there's 25% off Fetus and some other thing, right? Okay. And then we get to test my noise canceling. Also liquid electric tape, which is sometimes more convenient. Just have to wait for it to dry, right? Okay, so now this is gonna sit and let's look at what orientation we want that that switch to be. But we're gonna have to bend these wires a little bit. 
inward. Didn't hear a thing. Awesome. Hey, FBWA. Let's go here. And so the orientation of the lever, and I'm just, I don't know if it matters, but we're going to match it. So that goes there and that goes there. Okay. So it's going to go in this direction right here. And then we're going to bend in these two terminals just so they will follow this channel. Call that good. So now that'll go and get clamped onto the onto the printer. So let's make some room here. This is still drying. That'll be drying until next next time. Let's move this stuff off to the side. Where do you get your music playlist from? Do you know the names of the bands and song titles? So in general, I've been doing the stream beat stuff. And for a long time, I've been doing the same one because it seems to be pretty chill and nobody has complained about it. So this is the um, this is Cherry Soda uh, playlist Stream Beats by Harris Heller. So, um, yeah. Whoever designed this tool head did a lot of good combining and condensing of parts. Yeah. Okay. Printer back up here. Yep. I think that'll, that'll work. Oh, we use this on maker deck. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to go right here with those wires there. It goes right on the end. Now, what is the length on those screws? I should have checked that before. So I'll check it now. Okay. The lengths of these screws are in three by eights. Is that all of them? Let's get the tool head out of the way. Yes, it looks like they're all in three by eights. <clears throat> okay. By this rate, we'll do software on the fourth part. Maybe. One. Two. Okay, so we are, we'll put two of these on. Make sure that that's, make sure that that switch is in the right spot. There's a couple of nubbins there in the plastic that kind of hold it in place. This goes like this. Oh, and there's a little bit of side to side adjustment there. That's interesting. I'm going to go the diagonals here first. Is that right? Looks like it. Oh, that's an older mount. What? Uh oh. This is what I was sent to me. Do I need to reprint this mount? Nubbins are mechanical gubbins. <laughs> that might use longer screws. There, there didn't seem like a lot of threads coming out of that. So let's check this. Um, it didn't seem like a lot of threads. It might be a 10 millimeter might be more appropriate. Um, oh, oh. Yeah, I could do, I could probably do a 10. The new version doesn't have slotted holes. These, these holes here are only going to be, oh, let's see, what can I, what can I test it with? Well, they're pretty, they're pretty long, actually. 
So I can probably do tens. The old ones were a mix of, yeah, I see. So this is true. The the front, the these holes here are are deeper or need a longer screw than these. So I could you continue to use tens there. I think tens all around will work though. I think tens are, are what I should. Oh, I don't have any tens. Um, I can use button heads. I can use button head tens. Those have a, these have a slightly larger head on them anyway. If it fits, then they, they'll be slightly better. Yeah, there we go. Okay. The bottom of your micrometer has a plunger depth gauge. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the M3 hole is a little too, a little too small there. Okay, slide that into place. And then... on there apparently not maybe that is there we go okay um what are we talking about expect to pay 250 dollars or more for a night for a hotel in what area m3 by 12 would be too long yeah Oh, I'm gonna find the. Oh, I don't think I'm actually hitting. What do we got going on here? You know what? I need to actually be able to see this. We got Inspector Charlie on the house. I'm gonna do this again. Because I can't actually see what I'm doing and I need to. <laughs> oh, lost something. Where did that come from? Oh, that came from the front. Intentioner. Okay, fine. Hi, Charlie. From bottom screws for the LGX light, they're also tens, I believe. Okay. I I might have some ten. Oh, I should check check the box here for some tens. Um, no, I don't think I have any, any tens. M3 by 10 socket head. Anyway, I have button heads. Okay, let's go back here so I can actually see what I'm doing here. Oh, that's interesting. There we go. That's that one. And one more. Oh, bye, Charlie. What features? The front fell off. <laughs> Looks like the Rook Evolution just got a full release. Awesome. Really, you're not supposed to chew on that. There we go. What features does the Zero G Mercury have? The big thing is it's a Core XY gantry upgrade for the um, Ender 5. So hey Dave, welcome. How many centimeters do the back AB motor mount stand out from the frame with the motors on? That many centimeters. 
that many centimeters. Let's see. These stick out approximately four centimeters to the to the corner here. Very approximately. It might be 35. I think it's closer to 35. 32 to 35 millimeters. Exactly. 32 to 35 millimeters exactly. Oh, I'm dropping stuff up here. There we go. Okay, so that is now attached. And it's interesting that those slots don't really do anything. So I can see why you would have removed them. Now, Turtle, is there a new version of this mount for the LGX? So this mount, there is a new version, it sounds like. Just sent me the new one. OK, I will. I will probably I'll reprint that in between streams and and swap it out. What is different on it, I guess, is the question. The new one needs to be pushed to GitHub. It was missed. Well, that's I mean, the, one of the benefits here is is going through a build like this is to catch stuff. I had the pleasure of setting up my Bamboo X1C this weekend. That machine is a pleasure to use. That's good to hear. Okay, now you said do the, do the front and back plates. So if we look at this and so now can we get to, yeah, we can get to everything. So I think front and back plates. You can do the LGX light now or the front and back. Let's do the front and back. So those are M3 by 35s there. So that almost looks like a Voron tap plate. Oh, nearly, yeah. So this goes up in here. Ooh, that's a tight fit. Let me make sure everything is clean here. There we go. And then M3 by 35s. 3 by 30. I don't see M3 by 35. 25. Oh, I have a bunch of I have a bunch of fasteners over here that are probably no, those are all M3 by 8s. Now I said I was short M3 by 8s, right? I think that's the extras. M3 by 35 socket head. I don't have in stainless anyway. Hey, Jared. Wait, did you end up doing yellow and blue? I did. I did. See, just a little splash of yellow. Just a little splash. You like it? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to grab some black oxide screws for this. You won't see them anyway. So those guys all the way through here, looks like. It's the minion build. 
There we go. And then we've got a couple of M3 by eights in here, right? Yeah, M3 by eights. Three by eights up in here. It was my original color suggestion, but wasn't sure there was enough to really do a good accent. There, there, there will be enough. <laughs> That'll do it, yep. So tool head and that is pretty much the only yellow. Everything else is the blue and black. So, cool. That goes there. This guy. Now, where do, where do these wires, this goes here. There's still a screw hole here for this center. You don't use that, does it get in the way? And where do the wire path, does this just go up the back and run into something? Okay. I'm a little concerned about these wires. You can use it if you want, but it's not needed. Okay. <clears throat> Is this another M3 by 35? Yes. Hi, Charlie. Let me get my keyboard out of the way so you don't hit some button. Your wire, your color palette is always top notch on printers. So I definitely have two people to thank for that. Really, because Jared here in the chat and my wife. I take suggestions from both. Because really, let's be real. Jared will suggest something, but my wife has to approve it and think it's also a good idea. And I think so far, I think it's still 100%. <laughs> Okay, so that goes all the way to, I don't know what's gonna be the, hey Charlie, you are exactly in the way. <laughs> okay. Next time gadget, next time. <laughs> Use a cable tie to hold them. Is there a tie down spot? I like to base my printer colors off the unit model colors from Evangelion. On the duck there is. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, I see that. Perfect. And it'll just get pulled over there. So this is going to go up like here. Like here. this, if I thread that in further, we should see that poking out the back, right? There it is. Steve has always three printers with my recommended colors on it at this point. Abs yep. <laughs> I think there was one that wasn't 100% maybe on the purple color. Maybe that one ended up being Sparta purple after printed. Yes. So we, we tried actual test prints. Uh, my green V2, DJ Natty, would be the third. Okay, Charlie. You get to go there. <laughs> That is, is that actually threading in? Let's see. Oh yeah, I just had to keep, it's a little tight here, I think because, there we go. Because the friction fit up here was a little tight. Yeah. 
It's threading in though. There we go. The 80s Trident 250. That's um, my wife and Klee. So they both suggested, my, my wife suggested an 80s color theme and I think Klee narrowed it down to the, the Outrun theme. That was the V0S1, Jared, the purple one. How do you compensate for screw holes in the Voron teams? Um, in general, a, a slide fit for an M3 is a 3.5 millimeter hole. Uh, I mean, you just size them. So, okay, that's there. And then this guy is gonna come off to the side and slip up in here and get two more 35 millimeter M3s. Do I have button head 35s? Because I think I'd rather do that. I do. Oh, I only have, <laughs> I only have exactly as many as I need. I only have exactly as many as I need. One of the big LDO V2s Steve built for a friend inspired my Trident color scheme. The dark gray and orange one? Okay. So that's those. And I'm going to actually replace those two top ones just because it's bugging me. Well, since I have these stainless. You'll, ah, no, never mind. You will never see these. You probably won't be able to see them from there. And I'm, I'm going to save these for if I need them. And it's in a black part, so. <laughs> okay. That's there. We've got a... This piece here. There's that one. There's the little umbilical holder. There we go. Get in there. Time to order more screws. Uh, there are a few that I'm just a little shy on. Yep. Let's go here. Looking like a tool head. Let me pull out this Rapido. I need to pull the top off here. The V groove mount. Oh. Bing. I probably have some fasteners in here that I want. One, two, three, and one more. Nozzles, nozzles. I don't have one more. I'm actually missing a screw out of there. That's funny. Missing one screw. I'm sure I have one somewhere. 
Okay, so Rapido with looks like heater and thermistor. This it looks like in the CAD they indicate the side that the wire should come up. So coming up this side. And how does that actually attach? That attaches there. Okay. So this piece here has the Rapido right there. Okay. Apparently like that. The Rapido mount has cable ties. Yeah, I see that right there. So that's that'll go right there. We'll clean clean up some of this. Some of this is going to be kind of figuring out how I want to route and clean up the wires. And these are M 2.5s. I'm missing one. So let me see if I can find an extra. I have a box of miscellaneous stuff. Nope, not in there. What tool headboard does this use? I'm going to use a um, Victory Tech EBB 36. steal one out of this dragon. I think it's the same thing. There we go. Oops. Let's see if it's See if it's long enough. Hey, Sean. So I just purchased a 3820M from iWIS based on your recommendation because my PO9s were knockoffs and I can't really crimp them. Hopefully the iWIS is better. I would imagine so. Like I said, I'm not a, I've said, I'm not a big fan of the PAO9s anymore. Yep, there we go. Okay. Robbing Peter to pay Paul. What do you think? When do I think I'll wire it? After Rocky? Yes. So after. So once again, I won't be streaming this coming weekend because I'll be in Colorado. Um, so coming back from Colorado, it's looking like because we're at four hours now, we're going to I'm going to try to finish up building this tool head, at least the for the, the major part of it. Um, finish up assembly of the tool head, but then we'll belt it and we'll get into Hydra next, next stream. <laughs> How a pyramid scheme works. Yeah. So we're just going to basically get the components of the tool head here all installed. And then um, next stream we'll belt it and do Hydra and start on the electronics. So Okay, these screws in here are M3 by 25s. Oh, there's M3 by 30. Do I have any other M3 by 25s? Yes, okay. M3 by 25s. Hey, hybrid robotics. 
So in three by 25 through the front here. And into there. Now, this is gonna come out off in order for us to belt this up, uh, it looks like. So this is just kind of assembling things. And I've also, I, this needs to come off because I can't get the, um, the LGX on here. So LGX next. LGX goes up here. And then there is a, I'm just referencing the CAD real quick, an M3 by eight on the side into here and I'm not going to tighten this down I'm just putting it in place and then in three by tens I think someone said it says in three by eights up from the bottom but it's tens yeah I'll need to install the belts before the hot end actually goes on. Um, there is a PTFE tube. So, so did I get an answer? I didn't necessarily see it if you answered. Is the um, the PTFE tube in here? Here, let's, where are you? There we are. Is this tube correct in the CAD? Eight on the side, tens on the bottom. Okay, eight on the side, tens on the bottom. The lengths are on the 2.4 EVA site. This this is, here, what is this? Um, Capricorn, isolate that. Info, here to here. This is saying 42 millimeters, 42 millimeters. Be careful with the length of the screws on the LGX like you can bork it if they are too long and press too much. That's good to know. That's not right. So if we look this up, we are looking for the EVA tool head. And if we go to EVA 3D, and is there a 2.4? I'm, I'm guessing this is where I want to be, right? I want the, if you are looking for the old version, it's here, okay. And then if we go to hot ends, Rapido, bill of materials, PTFE 23.7 millimeters. Is that, does that sound correct? So hopefully I kind of went through a process there of how we find what we're looking for. plus the drive length. Okay. I have split the lengths into two, the drive side and the hot end side. You will need to sum the two lengths from this and the drive bomb you'll be using. So 23.7 and then drives LGX light is 18. So 23.7 plus 18. Twenty three point seven plus eighteen. It's forty one point seven. So forty one point seven millimeters is what we need to do for that PTFE lane. So let me grab my PTFE box. Do I have any? I do have some Capricorn. Let's go ahead and use some Capricorn. 41.7. I'm gonna take my handy dandy little jig. And I'm gonna start by cutting a little piece. Start by cutting a little piece square. And 
and then we'll measure this out to 41.7 millimeters. 41.7. There we go. There we go. And tighten this up. What's zero G? It'll, I'll make a tool for this on the dock so you can fill in what you use and it'll return the length. That'd be awesome. There we go. Okay. And still take my chamfer tool and chamfer that entry point. Hey, Dury. I can maths. <laughs> and you know, the build is going well. Always cut towards yourself, never someone else. I'm just used to, I mean, ever, the carving, the carving motion. I'm not gonna cut myself, it's okay. Let's see that tool. Oh, this little thing? So I modeled this years ago. And all it is, is just a little clamp with a flat surface so I can cut the cut the PTFE tubing a little easier. Okay, so this should go in here. And then that'll go up in there. Now I need 10 millimeter screws for the So 10 millimeter screws up through the bottom here. There we go. Awesome tool I printed one myself. That is out on, is that on my GitHub or is it out on Voron users? It might be out on Voron users. There we go. And then we're just kind of mocking this up for the most part at this point. Hopefully that should go up into there. All right, like that. Never once used long of a screw on LGX light and it jammed up the drive gears. Too oh yeah. This is moving. This is moving good. But that is right there. Um we may need to. So how does this let's check something. It's still a fairly light printer at this point. How does this guy mount? So this is going to go something like this. Ah, is there an updated? Does the updated mount have clearance for a for a standoff here? Um, there's no clearance there for the standoff. If you can see there, I can't get through there. Okay, so that is a good point to, at this point, we're pretty much, I need to print this new mount. So, hey, there you are. Hey, Daniel, how are you? The new one fixes that. So there is an updated mount here that I'm going to print between streams, and that'll give me the clearance I need for the standoff for this little um, uh, mount. Now, I don't need this piece at this point, so I'm going to take this off because the umbilical is going to go here, not here. So, see you, Lars. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. So, yeah, this is going here. We don't need this umbilical mount because we're going to use this one. 
So I know this is a cat channel, but I couldn't pass up the opportunity to see over 100 golden retrievers in Boston today at the marathon finish line. That's awesome. And so we definitely end, end the stream on a good note. Let's make sure at least Charlie sleeping is on camera. <laughs> Little guy was up all night. Yeah, I think I think progress was made. I wouldn't say great progress, but we, we made good progress. I was hoping to have it belted today. Um, that was kind of the goal, was to just get the gantry together and belted. So it's close. It's very close, but you get an idea, definitely get an idea of the look at this point. The, the blue and black with a little bit of yellow. Get that off there, there. And the frame, I don't, did I, did I tell you, Daniel, the frame is pretty much spot on now. So it's not rocking at all. I tapped the front, I, I ended up going with the tapped um, tensioners. So, and then I'm going to reprint this because now we, we find out that I really need to. Was most, it was mostly these corner brackets, yep. I think there was a little bit of tweaking in, the, in straightening the ends of the extrusions because all of them needed a little bit of straightening. But those corner brackets had the biggest impact. So... Yeah, awesome. And this, it looks like, is there a, maybe that's good. Actually, that is good because if I put that, I'm, I'm thinking the ducting, is the ducting the right one for this? And it's about a mil, two millimeters below, above the, the nozzle here. So that's probably as good as it gets right there for the level of those duct, the, the nozzles there. <sighs> okay. This is awesome. Things are assembled, things are going. So with that, we're gonna call it um, the reminder that I won't be streaming next weekend, I'll be in Colorado. But when we come back the following weekend, we'll get some, um, it belted and Hydra and get continue the progress. So I hope to see whoever can make it at the event. I'm really looking forward to this. So huge thanks again to Fabrico um, and Big Tree Tech for the parts on the build and Polymaker for letting me do the filament giveaway. And thank you for everybody who became a member or got a gifted membership today, gifted memberships. Um, so is that tool on my GitHub? That tool is on the Voron users. I need to move it over and make a copy of it on my GitHub. I'll get it over there, Jack Black. So um yeah thanks again we will hope everybody has a good rest of the day good rest of the weekend i'm gonna be busy 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 prepping but it's gonna be fun so have a good one everyone we'll see you next time <laughs> bye